Hey everyone, Douglas here, and welcome back to the MMT uh, Macro Trader live stream. It's Wednesday, it's 8 o'clock, same place, same time, same crew. <laughs> MMT <laughs> Macro Crew. Everyone, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Douglas. I, um, thank you. you. How's it going, man? Good, thank you. Good, good, good. Uh, yeah. Every week's different set of challenges, different set of tweets, different set of debugging problems. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Speaking of debugging problems, I had my first, um, I, I was a little sheepish about this because uh, they really should have been asking you, um, but I got a, 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 a Twitter DM asking me if I could solve some problems with their code. <laughs> they were trying to build an LSTM wow. model. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I had to, you know, put my tail between my legs and put my head down and tell him I really don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but he was able to figure it out. He was able to figure it out himself. It was like an input shape issue. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I felt, I felt that, yeah, 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 yeah. Get so the shape, right. You gotta, yeah. you gotta stick it. It's like a jigsaw piece, man. Yeah. Stick it in. Yeah. Right way. Get it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, let's see. We both had kind of a exciting past weeks in terms of, uh, MMT related, uh, related outreach. Yeah. Uh, Plus your Patreon. I think, um, I think it works like. I think there's a guy, Andy Lucas, who might might have signed up as a Patreon, and uh, he's firing away on Twitter DM asking me a few questions. Nice. Yeah, gen general, good good macro stuff that I'm actually an expert on rather than the financial stuff. <laughs> the financial side. So he's not asking me for, you know, trading advice. Trading which advice. Because uh, I, just, I just send him your way. Um, nice. Let's see. Yeah. A couple quick things. One, I, I got to tell everyone, thank you for the likes ahead of time. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, as I'm even stating this, I'm seeing more likes roll in. Thank you. Uh, very cool. I, I, I got to tell you, uh, and, and it, this is one of the things Bijou and I were talking about before we went live. Some of the stuff is, is blowing up in, in ways that we never really imagined. And uh, we're super excited. We're having a ton of fun with this. And I hope you guys are having fun too. Um, I love the chat. I love it when everyone says hi. It's so cool. And uh, you guys are the best, and I'm I'm just I'm I'm pumped to continue to keep growing, keep this uh, keep this train going forward, and uh, getting more people on the hype train as uh, as we continue to kind of grow. Yeah, uh, our efforts. I, I do anti. I do anti advertising. <laughs> do this advertising the anti hype train. The anti. -hype if anyone train. if anyone thinks that we're boneheaded and say something stupid or cringe, I I, I really want to know. I really do. Unless you're but an reserve, MMT, unless you're right an MMT detractor, uh, in which case <laughs> you might get ignored, unless it's legit constructive uh, constructive criticism. Uh, let's see. Hey, Zeus, welcome. I see you here, man. Josh, welcome. Sim, howdy. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bijou, you were on a podcast. Uh, Michael, yeah. welcome as well, man. Uh, Bijou, you were on a podcast this yeah. week. How'd that, how'd that go? Yeah. Oh, firstly, everyone, Jesus, Josh, Michael, uh, Sim. Yeah, you should all you should all try and uh, reach out, see if you can go on these podcasts. Uh, the, the less elitist sort of, you know, overly educated snobs, because you know they're going to be overly educated, they're going to probably get a lot wrong. And the more sort of uh, MMT activist uh, working class grunts that we can put on these shows, uh, the better. You know, so. Invite yourself on to these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah, I had talked to uh, Andy and Ryan on the Applied MMT podcast. They're very much in the uh, in, in Douglas's side of MMT, looking at it to, um, you know, uh, help make a bit of a living, talk about finance and stuff. Uh, I haven't listened to all of their backlog, of course. You know, no one can go through all these podcast episodes. Uh, if you're doing it while you're exercising, I, I think you miss this probably a, a bit a bit as well. So, but anyway, it was good. That I think it was a bit cringe though. I'm not sure. I thought it was really I, good. I thought it was really good. I, I thought yeah. I ended up. Yeah, they asked me like, I mean, we we chatted a little bit beforehand, and then they just wanted to in, me to introduce myself. I, I must have taken about half an hour or something <laughs> to get, get past my own personal history. Not that I went deep. Just just talking about the economics and the physics. And then, and then, and then, eventually, I, I managed to say some some words that came out of my mouth that might have been uh, semi intelligible. And I, <laughs> try, I tried to talk about our our work uh, 
Douglas's work and how he's uh, doing an amazing job on the um, neural networks and so forth. And uh, and then all I vaguely remember is at the very end, because this is, this is a bit early in the morning for me. At the very end, they, uh, Andrew Andy had apparently gone and read my uh, one of my blogs, the, the macro economics yeah. one, of course. Yeah. Oh, hung up high. And uh, he quoted something back at me. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, like getting yeah, chills. Yeah, yeah. I'm like getting chills. Like, oh, geez, did I write that? <laughs> they made it sound so profound. It was awesome. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's really deep. And I, was I, like, I oh, actually, man, I actually do think. Thank, on, you. thank on, you so much. It was a good. On your blog, your blog writing though, it, it actually you do a hell of a job. I, I mean, I I really I, I kind of agree with them. Um, your your blog writing, I can tell you, I I know you probably don't think you put a ton of time in it, um, but but it it is definitely I, I think, and I know you. Do, I mean, I know you've even told me you don't polish it that much, but um, it yeah. comes off as well polished and well thought out. Uh, so I, I agree with them that there's a lot of yeah. profound stuff there. I tell you, this polish. One of the secrets to polish is to it's not in my it's not in my bones really but i've kind of trained myself just 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 try and fix a few of the typos yeah <laughs> it makes it can make a difference to the reader yeah. i was told yeah. i was told so often i write and it's full of full of spelling mistakes uh which are just fingers on the keyboard mistakes not not actually you know it's not like i can't spell but yep. often i get e's and i's and o's around the wrong way yep and i tell you that if you write does not like this does not make any sense. The number of times it comes out as do snot <laughs> is, is pretty amazing. So yeah, I could almost like auto typo correct some things. <laughs> um, anyway, do you want to yeah. know? Do you want to know my my one secret that uh, that 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 uh, doctors What's hate? Um, Chat GPT. You just put it in there. I mean, and just ask yeah, yeah, it, yeah. ask it to kick uh, back. <laughs> yeah. Just just kick kick back some feedback and tell you why. Oh that makes man, grammarly, grammarly a bit redundant, isn't it? Probably now. Yeah. Mm. I had a, I had a project, uh, I have to do a, a voiceover, um, for a presentation and, uh, the, the, the script they sent me was, um, lacking in grammar. Let's put it that way. There was some, <laughs> yeah, as so I, I put it in chat GPT, the, the script, I mean, the very first, the very first sentence had, uh, like a triple redundant statement. Oh, and, cool. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was terrible. Ter isn't, isn't that just good pedagogy? Oh, God, maybe. Just no, the same thing three times. Got to do it. Uh, and, and it, it isn't, isn't, isn't <sighs> lacking, lacking good grammar. Isn't that ungrammatical? Lacking good grammar. Listen, I'm allowed to speak with bad grammar, but if I'm going to read something out that's going to be uh, that's going to be listened to by hundreds, if not thousands, of people, uh -huh. um, it's kind of a, a how to. <laughs> but it did. <laughs> so what I asked ChatGPT is, I'm like, hey make some recommendations for me and tell me why you're making them. Uh, so I, you know, two things, uh -huh. make it, and it did. Cool. And actually the very first thing it said is, uh, there's no need to be so redundant. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. I agree. So, uh, very good. Um, distilling this is distilled collective wellspring of human knowledge coming out in chat GBT. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you society. <laughs> Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, though, actually, you know, I see so many takes. Um, we'll get in. We'll get into economics. I got some fun things to share tonight, everybody. Um, this first few minutes, I kind of like to just let people get on board. But I'll tell you what, I, I if, if <laughs> there are so many uh, hot takes out here about every uh, out there right now about everything that chat GPT can't do. Um, I would start finding out things that you can do with chat GPT and, and use it as a tool, because what's going to happen is there's only going to be better iterations of it in the not too distant future and uh and if you know if, if you don't have it as a tool in your arsenal someone else is and uh and I, I can't i think it's awesome i, I mean i think it's such a, a neat tool and um, i know we've had this talk many times before but f find ways you can start to start to incorporate stuff you know ai in your in your daily uh, in your daily uh, uh work uh, workflow i think i think it'll be a benefit but that's that's my one piece of life advice the rest of my advice tonight is going to be uh, for Jay Powell in the Federal Reserve. Um, in, in fact, I think Jay Powell just uh, just logged on to the live stream. So I know, I know you're probably, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're probably watching, uh, Jay. So I've got some advice for you tonight. Um, let's see. I'm seeing some chats. We got our first question: Gold? Gold yet? yet. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Didn't hasn't gold come down a little bit? Let me check. 
I don't I don't pay too much attention to gold, uh, but I do know it had a nice little run up, um, and I think it's uh, I think it's down as of late. I'll have to pull it up later. Um, Ty, welcome. Larry Summers is here too. Yes, Larry Summers. I'm pretty sure is a regular viewer as well. Hey, speaking of Ty, um, and speaking of my my past week, I was on Steve Keen and Friends with Ty and Steve Keen. It was uh, I thought it was a pretty good uh, good little episode, and uh, I, I would say my two. The two people that influenced their, their thought that influenced me more than anyone else uh, in my journey to heterodox or MMT economics was uh, was Warren Mosler and Steve Keen, and probably um, probably even Steve Keen uh, more so, especially early on. Um, so it was uh, it was pretty cool to have an opportunity to talk to Steve and kind of tell him some of the things that uh, that I was doing or have been up to as of late. Mm. Um, and it's my understanding as well that uh, it was the second most watched live stream in terms of uh, viewer uh, viewer hours or however they they calculate it. Uh, so pretty cool on the number one uh, on the number one heterodox live stream that I have the number two stream of all time. Uh, oh, good. So and and I think uh, I think based on that metric, then that makes us the number one watched. MMT macro investing live stream, I believe. <laughs> so, no, no, we're the number one watched macro investing live stream hosted by two people two, yes. on on a Wednesday night, six p.m. Eastern time. I think, that, I think that's, that, yeah, that I can that I can claim. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, applied MMT, I think if you search applied, it might even, they might even have a website, applied MMT podcast, something like that. Yeah. Podcast, um, Spotify, all the, all the things, all, all the things. And then also, uh, Steve Keen, uh, prof Steve Keen is the YouTube channel. And if you go to live streams, so what uh, did you get into with, uh, Steve and Ty and Dan, Dan? Dan, yeah. Uh, you, you know, spe- speaking of which, before I tell you what I got into, uh, Dan and I turn out to have a lot in common in in, in other areas of philosophy that we're into. And I, I got to get in yeah. touch with Dan. I, I went over to his YouTube channel. He's got some cool stuff over there uh, from All back right. in his past. But uh, we talked a lot about deep learning, kind of explaining the deep learning stuff that, uh, that we'd been into and um, kind of the steps that yep. we got to at least validate that the deep learning outcomes were expected um, in in terms of the steps we took ahead of time for validation. Um, I do have one thing that we're going to go over tonight. One of the things that I want to go over tonight, Bijou uh, Mm -hmm. and I really haven't had a chance to talk this past week, so he's going to get to see some of this research Mm -hmm. fresh. Uh, But it's one of the things that I kind of, I don't know Mm -hmm. if I fully agree with Steve, but I don't know if I fully disagree with Steve. And we did talk about Mm -hmm what interest rates do to asset prices. So I have a bit of a presentation right. tonight. The The goal was maybe even to get a PowerPoint presentation uh, piece together, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll go over all the pieces. Sounds I kind of, I kind of ran out of time, but we'll, yeah, one of the things that he said that we, I, I, I had a hard stop at, uh, at the, at the top of the hour, had to get going to a, a kid's birthday party for the weekend. Uh, but uh, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, interest I, rate asset prices. Interest rate asset prices. I just, and, and particularly, and I'm glad, Ty. I'm glad you're here tonight too, because because maybe I want to make sure I'm steel manning Steve Keen's argument. But I, I think the general premise is that interest rates, a mechanism that interest rates can kind of derail uh, uh, macro growth, we'll call it, is that they suppress asset prices in a expanding credit cycle, and that suppression of asset prices can be enough to kind of prick the asset bubble. Okay. Um, Maybe. Uh, yes. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. And, and, and in all, in all <laughs> sincerity, um, I think maybe is the right answer. <laughs> I mean, I think that I, I think there has to be enough humility there to say that one way or another, the data the data that we can measure, I don't think. Um, well, yeah, Ty, you're right. I mean, it does depend on the asset, but I, I don't think the data that we measure can tell us one way or another. So um, we'll get into that in uh, in a little while. And um, yeah, if it depends on assets, whether it has a macro effect on the economy and, and impacts uh, inflation or unemployment in the macro, is is going to be a huge maybe. 
it, like it maybe is going to do that in Australia, in the USA maybe not, right? Yes. Anyway, yeah, yeah, something to so that's going to come later. So what are we going to yeah, do now? Um, <laughs> well, apparently, right now <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about my philosophical takes and the things that I'm into because that is what uh, Michael <laughs> wants to bring up. Uh, Michael, Michael, Michael. Um, I I would love to get into some of this stuff. I know Bijou uh, would love to get into philosophy. I oh, and, and trust me, if, if you ever here's the thing, if 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 uh, if you ever catch me on um, you know Discord or something like that, hit, hit me up and and I'll talk to you one on one. I just I, I have yeah. <laughs> I am happy to uh, offend you know, kind of the anti MMT crowd. Mm -hmm. And I know I come off as a bit arrogant on Twitter. That's, you know, that, um, that's on purpose, but, um, there are, there are things that I know people get, uh, that I, I just feel the need to be agreeable unless it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one discussion. So, um, <laughs> I like to, I, I like to get into philosophy, but most philosophers, um, really suck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're serious academic philosopher getting paid to do it, you're going to be corrupted. So all of the great philosophers of the past have been great because they've had one or two great uh, good ideas and they've sort of, you know, drilled deep down into them, doubled and tripled down on them, uh, which makes them end up being stupid and, and ridiculous. So I like the everyday philosopher who, who yeah. is all over the place and just looking looking for good ideas and looking for things that are true and uh, you know, scrappy, the scrappy types. F philosophy <laughs> feels a lot like, um, it, it, I mean, it, it's always a situation where you can never really, you can never truly prove <laughs> your, uh, yeah. your philosophical bedrock anyway. Right. I, I mean, right. It, it, it's some... but on the other hand, you could be correct in, in a, some, some of it. And, and, that, and that's, yeah. But then believing it like in, in, as an absolute truth is is can get you into a real mess, or can get you a huge cult following. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ken, welcome, man. Uh, Ken sent me a sweet, uh, very cool link on Twitter today that I, I will also go over. Um, Right. As, as well so we, we have a ton we have a ton to cover and we're starting to get a lot of people in hit that like button uh if you are just showing up ty does douglas do day trading or active or both i, I would just consider myself an active trader um i have held the one position that i am in for the better part of like what three three months now four months now going on maybe a little bit shorter than that i don't day trade i've tried um I just don't think there is an edge in day trading. And the reason I don't think there's an edge in day trading is really because of who it is and what it is you'd be day trading against. Maybe yeah. there might be, but you got to realize the most sophisticated deep learning models, the most sophisticated machine algorithms are done um, at, at the shortest time frames. So uh, it is it is a game where you are up against the smartest people in the world when you start uh i mean the whole thing is up you're up against the smartest people well, in the world but mike norman okay he, the, the guys that have been on the trading floors uh and in the uh, proprietary trading desks in the plush you know penthouse trading floors and rooms they'll tell you it's rigged i mean some of it may even be illegal but but the guys on one trading desk putting huge calls in and then they're signaling ahead of time to their buddies over at the other trading desk uh doing the doing the derivatives yeah. or options yeah. uh, what to do yeah. ahead of time before anyone in the retail before any of us plebs get 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 a chance to figure out what the price signals are so so you're you're, you're it's not even it's not even just the algorithm the trading that's going to beat you it's um it's the inside games that are gonna gonna always beat you. Make it difficult. So you're trading. Yeah. You, you're yeah. basically day trading on noise, um, yeah. and so it's just gonna be pretty much luck if you if you come out ahead. And if you come out ahead, convince yourself that it's because you had a, a yep. great system. Yep. yep. A lot of chances are you're fooling yourself. Yep. Uh, and you can fool yourself for an awful long time. So that'd be good for you, but uh, yeah, be careful. I 
like a uh, okay. I, it, it, what's really wild is that J- Jim Simon Simons. He's the uh, um, rent tech guy, right? Um, right? Jim Simons. In in his, if you're unfamiliar with rent tech, they are. I got a bunch of screens that I just messed up in front of me. Give me just a second, guys. Um, let's see. J- Jim Simons is his Renaissance Technology and his Medallion Fund. Right, they, they've they've crushed it for 30, 40 years now. Best returning fund of all time, like forty percent annualized, the whole bit. Right, I mean, um, he's he's just done amazing things. I was watching and and uh, like kind of a, a documentary on uh, some of the information and, and whatnot, and, and uh, some of the things he's done over the years. He was doing uh, effectively what we would call like the like introduction to deep learning. Uh, effectively, mm-hmm. you know, mach- what we would at least call machine learning going right. all the way back to the nineties, he was doing momentum right. machine learning in the eighties. <laughs> so yeah, I, like I, the, the, is, is he the guy that funded the mathematics Institute? I don't know if he did, or if that was the millennium fund guy, um, uh, $16. Yeah. Six it's two hours Simon's day, is, man. Nick. That's, that's pretty good tie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, you you know, if you look at what he was doing <laughs> back in the uh, back in the back in the eighties and nineties, uh, I can only imagine where they're at today. And and actually, yeah. my guess. So I, I mean, every, everyone everyone has a guess as to what Jim Simons and, and Rentech is actually up to. My guess is that they actually stumbled across. Um, oh, what what is it? I, my guess is they actually stumbled across like like Nash equilibrium and game theory way before anyone else did and was it and has been able to exploit that and stay ahead of that game um, apply applying it to financial markets well yeah correct they didn't discover it. yeah, yeah. They, they were able to apply it to um to financial markets well before uh well before anyone else was able to mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of, God, I wish I would have written this down. Uh, I'm really, I'm really into poker. Uh, I played poker for, for many years and, um, there, there was a poker bot that was created by, um, that was created by Facebook that crushed a ton of poker pros and it used, uh, um, I used a deep learning method that effectively played unexploitable poker to the point that it, it was never exploiting anyone, but it was just playing perfect poker. So if you ever made a mistake, you would effectively be funneling this bot money, right? So, I mean, that's, that's effectively how it worked. And it, I mean, it used the Nash equilibrium game theory approach and was able to, yeah, I mean, it was able to, uh, uh, successfully beat these these poker pros at the highest level and i i think that's what jim simon effectively figured out right. is that he could just assuming the short term trade is a zero sum game that right. he could effectively create an algorithm that just never makes a bad trade right it never makes a mistake right. and then slowly just hoovered up the uh yeah. the, the mistakes the, the 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 loss in equity if you will um that other traders were making over time. That's my guess that, it, you know, eventually what he did yeah. in the short run, uh, which means if he's had 20 years to put together <laughs> with, you know, supercomputers and algorithm to yeah. do this, trading on the short run is going to be very difficult because any mistake I yeah. make, there are algorithms that are exploiting those mistakes and not making those mistakes. Right. Well, those are my thoughts. I'll digress. Gives, gives me, gives me kind of, uh, to, uh i don't know what, what's the word two minds about it I, i'm not sure but i think he is the simon's simon's foundation funder guy at least, at least okay, it's could jim be, could jim be. and marilyn simon yeah that sounds right yeah yeah that sounds I'm right. not sure that sounds because right. he certainly i remember he did make a lot of money he, he might have also supported the millennium prize as well but that was clay i think the clay okay. mathematics institute i'm not sure who clay is but whatever it could have been also simon's but yeah so i'm in two minds about that it's, it's like you know it's like it's like uh you know the like nazis funded some humanitarian effort <laughs> <laughs> I don't, are you, are you going to refuse the funding 
for for like some you know absolute poverty elimination just because they're uh you know fascists or neoliberals or whatever do you refuse it uh, on principle or do you take it uh, anyway for the science mathematics research funding i'll i'll take it thank you thank you mr simons <laughs> give me give me one second actually let me uh bijou has it pulled up so i'm gonna switch over to his screen What's real that? quick so everyone I, I was just switching over to your screen so everyone could see this yeah, science foundation yeah. thing that you pulled yeah. up here so uh, yeah. yeah those are my those are my thoughts i, I mean i i think uh yeah uh, especially the short-term technical stuff i i don't i mean I've, I've i've given it my best shot ty if you are successful man more more power to you on the short run um i, I just i i like the longer term plays i mean with that being said I, i'm also leveraged to the <laughs> You can fill in the word there, um, but less the less the YouTube algorithm uh, gods come down on me. But um, I, I mean, I will make leverage plays when I think I'm in the right here. So um, let's see. All right, we've gotten uh, we've gotten quite a few likes. I think the people are ready for what it is right, I want to share it. tonight. Um, your wife thinks you're an idiot for trying. <laughs> Thank you, Monique. <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah, filling in. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I won't say it, but by God, <laughs> I'll highlight the comment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's change gears. Give, give me one second. I'm noticing one of the windows okay. I need to be working is not pulled up here. Ooh. Bummer. That ain't working. Why? Why won't this work? Bijou, did you do anything else fun this week? <laughs> uh, Will I fix no. this? Oh no, I was working. I was, I was doing a bit of dashboard aesthetics. Oh yeah, yeah. it's like I was getting so frustrated because I I used the template and uh, and then I didn't like it because it had gross borders and fonts that were too big. It was violating Ed Tufts' principles of data visualization all over this place. So I had to go in and hack into the, uh, you know, CSS uh, style sheets, which I, I never really liked doing. <laughs> so I found the API for the Python panel dashboards a little bit, a little bit primitive and lacking. So okay. anyway, gra grappling with that isn't isn't so much fun, but um, you know, getting a nice looking dashboard is is, is fun. So bit of bit of one, bit of the other, and uh, you know, I, I was actually going going back and reading a bit of Nassim Taleb in. NNT because uh, I, I, from time to time I, I, I get these pangs that um, that what what you're doing with uh, the Doug bots, um, you know, uh, is is it's risky. If, if we were just to give give it to people and they could trade off it at the moment, well, we can't because we haven't actually got the trading end of it done. You know, the the yeah. betting end of it done. Yep. Um, it, it could could win a lot of people uh ahead ahead of market share but it also could lose you a lot so the thing is um i, li I like the seem to live for the philosophy I and mean, we just talked about philosophy and i was dunking on them but he he's a good philosopher of uh, probability statistics yep. Yep. even if his politics is weird and he's a he's a very weird guy you know very non-standard in his views he's like he's a bit like mosler in a sense it's like uh, yeah, I made a lot of money out of trading, and it's it's like a, a gross waste of human life. Human, you know. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. it's like he, he's an anti trader in a way. Yeah, yeah. He's not he's not a trader's trader. He's an anti trader, which which I think is really good. So the way you do that with the Dugbot project is is, and I think I think you're going to really enjoy this later. Is what you do is you know you build uncertainty models, so you know what your uncertainties are. So that you're always trading within a maximum minimum band. So you're always yep, wanting yep. to look at the at the uh, total risk exposure or your or your absolute, you know, worst case or best case losses and gains. Yeah. And uh, so you can do it in all sorts of ways. And one is to you know Monte Carlo things, which yep. is how how Taleb does it. And and when you get into Monte Carloing, I don't know if you everyone's uh, familiar with what Monte Carlo is. But um, maybe I could do a little quick demo of that. I don't know. But um, you want me to put your screen up? Yeah, maybe yeah, should, maybe yeah, should do a little demo. Yeah, let's do I'll it. Do a little demo. Let's, let's, it was real quick. Let's run it. Yeah, give me a second. Let me uh, put up your tablet here. All right, you're good to go. 
So I, I don't know how we do this. But, by the way, actually, like let me let me cut you off real quick. Uh, uh, let me know in the chat too. D does the stream look good? Uh, what I'm doing right now. So Bijou, uh, as Bijou kind of sets this up, uh, <laughs> we've always had this issue where Bijou sees the live stream as you guys see it, so he never knows what it is that I'm actually doing. But I'm now streaming it to him with about a, a half a half a second, maybe even a quarter second delay, so he gets to see it immediately. But that also means I'm splitting the stream two ways. Are you guys seeing any sort of uh, degradation of quality or anything? Everything look good on your end. Let me know what uh, let me know what you're seeing on your end, and uh, if you guys are having any issues with quality. Otherwise, um, it, it benefits Bijou what I'm doing quite a lot here. But Bijou, talk to me about Monte Carlo. Yeah. Uh, let me let me see if I can draw a square. Oh yeah, it works. That's supposed to be a square. Uh, <laughs> draw a circle here. That's supposed to be a circle. Uh, and uh, I'm supposed to try and ooh, uh, hang on. I want to move that? There we go. Ah, uh, you know what I mean. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be finicky and perfect this. But that's got to just fit in there, right? You get the idea. Boom. All right, so, so here's Monte Carlo for you. So you'd uh, you got a problem. You want to compute pi, and, and you're lazy. You don't you don't you have a calculator or anything. So so what you do is you just uh, uh, get a few darts. You know, whoops, sorry, still on the circle thing. Get a few darts. Uh, I'm not going to draw a good dart here. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of us. Make sure it's. <laughs> we'll just put it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be Jeez. good quality, right? So you, uh, you just throw, throw throw the dart at the board, um, and uh, boom, hits hits a spot here. Let me let me do it in red so you can see it. Hey, just just random darts here. Boom, 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 boom. You know what randomness looks like? It it it, it can be clumpy. Like that, and then you just count. So you just count. Uh, you know. Uh, okay, so uh, number of number of darts in the uh, circle. Hope I get this right. And don't embarrass myself. <laughs> what if I number of darts <laughs> darts in the in the square? So so if a dart hits outside, just just ignore those. They just we'll put some we'll put some putty and paint over those and you'll never know that the dart yeah, yeah. hit the wall on the, instead of the dart board. Yeah, yeah. And that and that's gonna be what is it? Uh it's gonna be proportional to the area of the circle over the area of the square, which is gonna be uh pi r squared over uh what is it? R squared. Um is that right? Well, cancel that pi. So, so the point is, you can do a cal. cal <laughs> I, I had it in my head that it was pi over two or something. Anyway, um, that's using Monte Carlo. So Monte Carlo is you've got a, you've got a thing that can compute something like a roulette wheel, right? That's that's our square and circle here. You know how to construct it. You know how to construct your roulette wheel like the square and circle. But it's designed to compute some odds, you know, of getting some numbers, in this case, pi. And you'd have no idea how, how it's going to compute the pi. But you do know how to roll the roulette, roulette wheel or throw darts at it or whatever it is. So just do that. You do it enough times and the statistics will calculate what you want, even though you, you had no idea how to actually sort of compute pi. So you get an approximation. If you do a thousand darts, you might get... 3.1 yep and your error would be proportional to the square root of the number of th dart throws you have roughly so it'd be like 3.1 plus or minus point point uh, two or something like that just keep on throwing a billion darts at it and uh you know you've got 3.141 throw a few billion more you, you know you, you, you have to go up in powers of 10 to get an increase okay. in, a, in efficiency of about uh 30 uh, percent or something so so the thing is, you're not going to be able to do that in real life. But since the advent of modern computers, people are people have been able to do this sort of thing on a computer. You can just churn through 
bazillions of, uh, or billions and billions, and uh, it's uh, Monte Carlo for you. Massively and powerful technique, and it's so cool and it's so fun because, you know, it's also fun to do the theory, the mathematical theory, to compute things exactly using, you know, transcendental function approximations and Taylor series and what have you. If you can do that, that's cool. But, you know, I'll, by far the, the most, I mean, you know, infinitely many more real life mathematical problems that have real world applications cannot be computed. Things we know equations cannot be solved. For example, just the fifth order polynomial, the general uh, quintic equation cannot be solved using um, multiplication and division and uh, radicals taking square roots. So we know there are vastly more pu mathematical puzzles that cannot be solved using an analytical approach, but a numerical approach will always work if you set it up right. And Monte Carlo is a very powerful uh, approach. And so if, like, so if you're not, if you're interested in calculating uncertainties, those, those can be very difficult to estimate, uh, far di more difficult than computing pi. And so if you use Monte Carlo though, it makes it kind of, kind of easy and fun. Yeah. So in, in your example here, you have a circle and you have a square, uh, for markets, if you were to build the, you know, some sort of simulator to, to run whatever it is that we need on, you know, based on whatever model we have, what, what's the circle and what's the square like? Okay. Well, um, the square would be, oh, sorry. That's it. That's a mis mis analogy because that's only the circle and square are only for computing pi. So you're looking at a ratio a ratio to get a particular number. So what we'd be looking at is um, our uncertainty or the maximum and minimum scores. So that would be like the maximum, I guess, would be the square and the minimum would be the circle, something like that. But because we're looking at um, uh, the stock prices or the index fund, it would be, in our case, let me just deface this diagram. Okay. <laughs> Uh, boo, boo, boo. Just move that around a bit. Oops, sorry, got hold of the wrong object. Uh, try that again. Um, okay, there we go. Let me try and grab that. Yeah, okay, there you go. Maybe I'll make that uh, blue or something. Um, right. So what 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 we what our situation would be is that um, we'd be counting things uh, in the region, um, pro probably here between the circle and the square. So that's that's our noise. And in, in, anything outside this this area here anything outside that is is like uh beyond what we want so so i guess our max our maximum i'm probably not making any sense i i realize this so everything in the square would, would be our maximum uncertainty and everything uh excluded in here or on the boundary here would be like a minimum or below the minimum so so we so we're not going to count this and we're not going to count anything outside the square or in, inside the square. But everything in the yellow is is our our noise. So, so that's what we'd sort of set up. So we'd we'd know that the, we won't get anything inside the small circle. We won't get anything in the square. Uh, and so we'd be counting counting the maximum number of uh, yellow things in the in the donut shape. It's roughly it's roughly how you do it, right? So that, that's that's a, that's a very that's a very poetic way of okay. saying what it's describing what we do. What uh, <laughs> it's nothing, what's nothing like what we do, but it's it's what, in the same spirit. If if you could use a Monte Carlo to estimate, oh yeah, sorry, Ken, you're right. Sorry, I was being stupid. Yeah, let me let me fix that. I was, so the area of the square is the diameter. Uh, so yeah, 
Yeah, Ken, Ken gave you the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Ken. Ken. This is the hazard of doing a live stream when you're sort of all nervous. Your, your mathematics goes to shit. Uh, so we've got pi r squared over 2r squared. That gives you, uh, you still can cancel the r's and you get pi over 4. And you did, so you just multiply your count by 4 to get, to get the number pi. Thank you, Ken. But anyway, the same same principle, Monte Carlo works for. Uh, so you get, you'd get a uh, maximum value for pi and a minimum value for pi if you're doing a sort of a donut okay. thing or whatever it is, and um, or if you want to calculate the, the the area of the donut, then you would not count the stuff inside the small circle, and then that's that's how we would do uh, our our estimate for uncertainties for your for your dug bots. So so strategy. we're. we're... We're estimating, okay, what, what you're saying is g given, uh, let's just say we end up having what we'll call them features, right? Well, for, for the sake of, for the sake of this discussion, we'll call them features and features are da data series that we think are actually kind of the, the, the drivers, the force of forward price yeah. of the S and D, yeah. right? And so what you're saying is, yeah, that's great, but it could be as high as a 50% increase and as low as a 10% increase yeah. one year from now. But also, but what's really important is the skewness and the asymmetry. Yep. So you could, you could have a 90% chance of a increase in the price, 10% chance of a decrease in the price, okay. but the, the, the drop in price could be catastrophic. Yeah. And if your simulations show that, then sometimes you'd be betting on the, 10 percent yeah just because the expect expected return is greater in that case yep. so it depends on the on, so yeah so the monte carlo in that case you'd be you'd be really interested and it's a good way of doing it it's it computes also the the distribution of the of your payoffs uh not just not just the maximum minimum but the distribution yeah. as well so yeah um, yeah so it's a really powerful method. Yeah, it was helpful. So it was helpful. It's, it's, okay, it's something I th I think you're going to get really pretty 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 excited about it. Um, I don't know if it's fully when you clicked. get to know. It. Yeah, I, I don't know yeah. if it's fully clicked yet, but um, I am excited for it to fully <laughs> click. <laughs> um, Sweet. that was cool. Okay, okay, that was yeah, good. Sorry that about was that. good. Sorry. No, 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 no. It's I, yeah, it's this, this is the stuff that I wanted to do this live stream for. To begin with, I mean, Bijou and I will have these talks and he'll, he'll, uh, really kind of help me, um, kind of <laughs> remind me what I should have been paying attention to in, uh, high school and college. <laughs> uh, Hi Andy or Ryan. This is, yeah. this is early for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Who, who runs the applied MMT podcast, uh, account itself, which, which, uh, I, I, or do you just want me to call you call you applied MMT podcast um, to keep the <laughs> to get the, the word A Adam okay Adam welcome Adam um let's see so you had you had something to yeah yeah let's get into it let's get into it fields? let's get All into right. it um okay a, a couple things I'm gonna pull up I'm gonna pull up VS code here all right, let, let me let me set the stage and um, yeah, let me set the stage here and, and kind of explain some some of that. I, I I had a tweet a couple maybe a week ago or so, uh, just kind of talking about how the mainstream continues to get interest rates wrong, and one of the things that came back is yeah, but zero percent interest rates caused an asset bubble or caused asset prices to rise during during ZERP. That was one of the consequences of ZERP. And then also in that same vein, um, when I was on like Steve Keen's show, this uh, live stream this weekend, his argument is that eventually interest rates will, ri uh, will, will suppress um, asset prices. And uh, on its face, I don't think I... I, I <laughs> I think it's just my my personality to just say yeah, but maybe there's another way to look at it, right? I, yeah. I, I mean, it's just yeah. it's just kind of my personality. Yeah, it's good. And I don't disagree that I don't disagree that from like a, a valuation standpoint, higher interest rates will make 
some investments look less appealing than they would have in a zero interest rate environment. Mm. Um, but on the macro whole, I just don't know. I, I mean, I, do, I just don't know if it really is the case that there is that it's anything more than a regaging when it comes to the macro economy. Now, I want to be very yeah. clear. I want to make a huge, a bunch of qualifiers here. Right. My, b- before I go into everything, my first qualifier is I would much rather have a 0% interest rate policy going forward forever. Right. Yeah. But I actually think. What's the school of thought for that? Or are you going to save the discussion of the school of thought later? No, I, I, I'll go into that right now. I only, I, I would argue that you can only get a, 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 let's call it for lack of a better word, a positive, a good outcome from a 0% interest rate policy mm. if you have the following conditions with it. The, the, the most important condition to begin with, and this is, um, this, is, this is bedrock, this precedes all other conditions when it comes to determining what monetary, monetary policy course you should go down. You, as a country, as a central bank, cannot <laughs> borrow in another country's currency. Like that has to be qualifier number one. If a country has debt that it needs to pay in a currency outside of its currency that it has sovereign control over, the whole thing is backwards and everything is everything else is off the table. Okay. Except if you've got a big army, then yes. you can borrow and just default. Yes, and give them the middle finger. Yeah, and are, yeah. are they are they going to invade you? No, nah. no. Yes, <laughs> if you're a small wee country, uh, you might have a bit of a problem with Mi- the CIA. M- military notwithstanding, uh, th- that is, it has to begin. Right. I mean, this discussion begins there. Okay. The the next thing is, government spending has to be aimed at increasing real output, right? This is, right. I mean, obviously this gets subjective and, and, and obviously people can push back at this point from the, the, the perspective of, well, you know, who determines what is real output, right? right. Yeah. I have no problem having that discussion, but right. the government spending at the, at the very least has to push toward, I mean, in, 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 a, in an ideal situation, it's building roads, it's increasing infrastructure, yeah. it's paying for healthcare all that sort of good stuff, right? Uh, well, everyone agrees on that. It's just that, you know, neoliberals uh, uh, say they want that, but they don't know how to get it. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. There, 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 you wouldn't find anyone who's who's completely against um, focusing on the real economy. Well, the, I mean... There's just, there's, the, the there's just some greenies who think we, we produce a lot of crap that we don't need, and so we could put resources into more uh, better producing better things i I think i think the thought the train of thought i have is that like the austrians or the right wing or the monetarists would say well you don't know what that's right the economy wants which which, to a certain extent i would say yeah you're probably right i mean that's it's i I do want a very robust free market free enterprise to find out what they do want right i I don't i don't don't disagree with that Um, yeah the types of sneakers that you want to wear i don't i don't don't think that should be government decreed yes yes (laughs) Um, and then, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Adam. I, I mean, the, the, the libertarians would, would be freaking out right now. Um, it, and then the final thing is you, you, you have to have, and you have to push for a zero unemployment rate that, that needs to be a policy decision to push for a zero unemployment rate. When you get all those three things aligned and the reason you want uh, a, a zero unemployment rate is that the, a, a zero unemployment rate benefits the workers um it it, right. it benefits the workers it, it puts the bargaining chip in the workers hands it also um i think it has some knock-on effects as well that it just makes a a hotter economy um and it makes it also yeah. to me makes it from my perspective i think a lot of people are, are just completely missing this point it makes a far more competitive far yeah. more cutthroat private sector right like i mean if you have zero yeah. <laughs> if you have zero unemployment um there's always another yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah there's always competition and and this it remind me to come back to this piece about the competition because i i just feel like no one <laughs> all of a sudden we have high interest rates and high interest rates apparently kills the competitive desire for companies to 
destroy another company? I, I, this, I, it, it seems to, it seems to be something that um, is is just all of a sudden yeah, totally. not n- not in the discussion anymore. That, that I would, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was just, just going to say I wouldn't say you have to have uh, zero unemployment or full employment policy with with a zero interest rate. It's just that. If you have it, you're going to push up inflation. If you're also paying interest to uh, yeah, people yeah, who already yeah, have yeah, money, yeah. And so, because it's a fiat, non-convertible fiat currency, and let's assume floating exchange rate, let's assume some sanity here. Yeah. Um. Then you can regauge the currency with continual inflation if you want to. If you want to have up the upper class and rentiers to be ever ever more wealthy, then that's the way you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not it's not incompatible with full employment yeah but uh, but i think you're right i think you want to make the competition for uh for the, the useful resources you want to have them being employed in the most productive efficient productive. ways yep. Yep. which means the employers have to be competing for employees they have to be desperate to find yes yeah people and so they're not going to be giving handing out bullshit jobs yep yep yeah so, so, so well, i think you're right they they go together so well, like zero interest rate and full employment, Inflo- yeah, so yeah. which was fiscal po- fiscal policy. And I make all these qualifiers because I'm now going to say a few things that are, it's not going to cr- contradict what I just said. But what I'm saying is we, we don't have that right. <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> to a certain extent, the high interest rate is kind of making things slightly better from some angles because it is in the in the current situation. It's giving free money to uh, we'll call it the finance class that, that is actually cr- able to create and sustain this kind of competitive um employment uh yeah. employment situation right i, I mean if, if if we went to a zero rate tomorrow yeah. i think that would uh, actually increase unemployment because uh, that would that would be deflationary i mean you're taking a trillion dollars away in interest payments um and there is a pass-through there's a trickle-down effect of those interest payments yeah. that are clearly heading to a, mm-hmm. yeah Exactly, you're removing the the unearned income income stream, but nevertheless, through a little bit of trickle down, that is allowing people to to hire hire um, labor at the moment. Yes. Yep. So if you remove that, you better replace it with some fiscal with something policy. else. Exactly. Exactly. Like yes. Yes. Or yes. Investment on infrastructure. Hire workers directly. Yep. Uh, to to uh, to build better infrastructure yep. rather than. Waiting for the private sector to do it, who who maybe don't have the incentive or <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and they should do it to, to get but through the government also, bureaucracy to actually increase yeah. the yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this me, is where the Austrians a, are absolutely also, right. I, the, the government bureaucracy, uh, but it doesn't have to be country. that way. I, I mean, that's yeah, it doesn't have to be that. You, you don't that you way. don't I mean, hire people yeah. into the government to do it. You can contract it out if if the private sector sector can do it better. Then the government pays them a monopsonist, mm-hmm. not. Uh, it's like well, it's, that's like what you want to do with Medicare for all. Basically, kind of, it's a stupid insurance scheme. But as long as it's the government uh, taking the risk, then it's it's as if it was just the government um, paying the private sector to to pr- provide for healthcare. Yeah, and so that's a that's a win for everyone and gets rid of the whole insurance industry. Uh, over, overhead which is a massive waste of human life by the way um what warren says is is making a lot of my uh social media commentary a little bit long now because now now i have to say the interest rates hikes are basic income for people who already have what money a what a in, in proportion what a to how much money they already have so that just doubled yeah. the length of my sentence I, I love that bit. In proportion to how in much proportion. Money oh, have. what a line! If you guys haven't seen it uh, or listened to it yet, what what was it called? What's the name of the podcast? The uh, Be, Beyond No Behind the Market. Behind the Markets. Yeah, uh, Mosler had a, a great interview on Behind the Markets. It starts off with this Poindexter professor. He's a nice guy and all that. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but. Um, explaining that uh, the Fed better do 100 basis points over the next, you know, four rate hikes instead of 50, because if he doesn't, if they don't, inflation's just going to get out of control. And I, it's just, it's, uh, oh my God. I mean, it's, it's, it's incoherent and then, babble. And then um, the, the dude, the host of the podcast says, yeah, but we're going to have this guy, Warren Marzalon later, who, who maybe says that interest rates are boosting the economy at the moment. And then the, 
that Poindexter uh, professor's like, well, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I agree with that uh, <laughs> highly unorthodox point of view. That's <laughs> so bad. And then Warren Mosler, just in his in his folksy sort of way, is like, well, you know, this is kind of how it actually works. Um, <laughs> It's a good interview. Uh, definitely look it, look it up and uh, give it a listen. All right. So now that I've uh, put, uh, Simon, by the way, I did see your uh, did see your message. I, I use SPXL, which is uh, leverage DTF three X the S and P. I've also used futures in the past, but futures uh, two reasons I switched to SPXL. One, uh, the costs are just cheaper over time. It's not a major difference, but I. I do think I calculated the cost to be slightly different between um, the interest that I'd pay on the margin loan for the futures, and then also there's a five dollar uh, trade cost for futures that isn't with SPXL, and I rarely have ever had the need to. So I I I, I only effectively trade the S and P. And then the most that I ever feel comfortable with in terms of my overall exposure, um, and again, I mean, I hold these positions for a while, is three times my total invest in, in, investable capital. Um, so if I have you know a hundred thousand dollar account, I consider I, I consider using uh, you know three x is is my maximum. I consider myself somewhere between uh, you know zero invested to a positive 300,000, relatively speaking, because of uh, the leverage um, in, in the S&P relative to the 100,000 I actually have of, of cash. Uh, that's, you know, that's the the boundary at which, um, at which the boundaries at which I'd, I'd invest. If, if you got bigger balls than I do and you want to go harder than that, uh, you'd, you'd need futures um, to, to get even more leverage. But with as, with as fast as swings can happen, uh, three times is... I don't know, it's a hell of a roller coaster for me. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll, we, we can come back to that uh, maybe at the end too. I can give some more thoughts on uh, on the leverage side of things and kind of how I play it. So I have set up the base case uh, for zero interest rates and, and how to implement some of that. And in the world that that actually, in other words, some of the conclusions I'm going to come to only work in the base case world that I set up just a few minutes ago. So now I'm going to dive into some of the research, and and the first thing you kind of have to understand is, is I have this I have this theory that um, the S and P like uh, you can do what's called like seasonal decomposition, which is what I have up on the screen right here. You can do uh, like component analysis, um, right? I mean, there are ways to pull that some time series and say like what are the principal components of this time series or what are the you know yeah what, what are the parts that make up this time series um so so in the sense of the s p you know what what ultimately determines the price of the s p my argument is over time the s p follows the growth in um in the government debt and and when you do a seasonal decomposition, which is what I have on the on the screen right now, which is just an algorithm um, that you can run, it it pulls out the trend, and the trend is identical, <laughs> almost one for one, mm -hmm. uh, national mm -hmm. debt over time. So uh, it 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 is it, that is kind of my base case. I'm not going to go into exactly every reason to prove this, but if you're an MMTer, that that should make complete sense to you yeah. um, that. The the what, what's what's ultimately savings is saved for tax advantage purposes in stocks, and there are behavioral reasons, cultural reasons, but ultimately, it's a it's a tax thing, and that drives the long term trend of the stock market. Um, this is a seasonal decomposition. What's left over after you take out the seasonality is. The residual, and then I would argue the residual, all this doesn't match perfectly. Again, this is just an algorithm. I mean, it's not exactly robust what I want, but I, I do think to a certain extent that the residual is, and this is like the other mean factor for pricing in the market over time, is the private debt cycle, uh, bank credit, mm. uh, growth and expansion. And those two things together, um, if you know, you're zoomed out enough, equal the price of the S&P over time, right? Um, right. so the question is, given those assumptions that I've had laying out everything, do interest rates increase in any way the, mm. um, 
the price of the S&P assets, right? I'm also going to look at housing in a second as well, because uh, I, to a certain extent, I, I don't think housing is exactly the same, but to a certain extent, you buy a house and then you put money into it over time, right? I mean, that's just, that's, right. that's how it works. And part of your income goes into your house. Um, so my thought is, and this is kind of my, so, so now that you understand kind of, you know, my, my, my underlying theory I can now make the yeah. hypothesis that I think a, a way to kind of understand the S&P, um, one way to understand it is to essentially detrend it by dividing the price of the S&P or the market cap of the S&P by government spending. So that, right. that's, that's the first step. And, and that, that should give us hopefully something to glean. I don't know, right? I mean, we're going to find out. Right. But hopefully there's yeah. something in there. Um, and then my next type, kind of the continue on this hypothesis then let's narrow in on ZERP versus non-ZERP, right? ZERP from yeah. my, you know, f- you know, from I would define it started in 2009 during the great financial crisis and effectively ended in the end of 2015. We went off ZERP uh, yeah. and we started increasing rates. So do we end up seeing, are we able to suss out any more expansion in asset prices once we, um, adjust for government spending, assuming you buy my, my, my kind of MMT theory that, that, that government spending, uh, is the trend of the S and P, right? Are you following me, Bijou? You, you, okay. you, yep. Uh, With you so far. Okay. Just had to scratch my ass. So I had to put on <laughs> mute for a second. Uh, it's hot over here. Yeah. It was warm today here. I, I got to go for a walk. It was uh, 41 degrees. Um, Fahrenheit, which is five degrees Celsius, four degrees Celsius. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <That's deep. All laughs> it's sunny, man. It's, okay. it's, I live in Michigan, man. That's good. That's uh, as good as good as we're going to okay. get for the year. Okay. Chart number one is just the S and P adjusted. Um, so yes, and this is, I forgot to put titles on this. Um, add title that is SPX. Adjusted oh, no. for net. Don't don't show me copilot. Oh, I got it what? wrong. <laughs> oh no, uh, plot is not defined. Oh shit! Do you know what I just did? I, oh, you didn't run the whole thing. I, I just I, I just I, the kernel's not initiated. <laughs> yeah. I tried to get cute, uh, but we'll we'll run it all. No worries. No worries. Uh, I I realized that I didn't run this since I restarted. So. Shift enter. You got to get off the mouse clicking. Okay. Nonsense. Okay. For for whatever reason, my um, my v my my VS code, the shortcut for next line hasn't been working, and it's it's been uh, a big pain okay. in the ass. So, Damn. all right. Damn. So we added our title. SPX adjusted for net deficit. Um. Here's sir. Uh, I mean, here here is. So again, huh. this is the, this is just the time period at which, um. Zerp was is in gray, yeah, and you know you have the big bubble right starting in the late '90s. This is mm-hmm. the private debt bubble, so that's clearly yep. defined. Credit cards, yep. And here's the long term trend. I, I don't. We are barely above when adjusted. Should show net full stater and Warren this natural rate of interest is zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and there's Zerp. I don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> if you think that is way outside the bounds of what was expected, I I don't know. That 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 Y scale is weird. I love the minus something. Well, it's log. I mean, I put it on log. If I if I okay. if I remove log, right. um, then it's that. But yeah. I, I just I wanted it in log. So the okay. so so any you, you know any. Uh, yeah, any the small stuff doesn't get lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can amplify something. Um, I, I would say this is a push. I mean, just looking at this, I would say this is a push. There's nothing that just sticks out here. It's like, wow, we really need to look deeper. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, uh, mm-hmm. like this is clearly. Yeah. Uh, next up, I, I also wanted to do uh, CPI, a uh, 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 real the 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 real rate of. Um, or, or I should say, uh, government spending adjusted, right? So th- that's what that's what this is, um, or the, the real okay. government spending CPI adjusted. So we can add add okay. a title that is uh, net deficit for real net deficit 
we can rerun that with the title. So there's that. And and again, I mean, you can just see that the. It's the, not the government spending, is it? Isn't that the SPX? Is that the SPX or the? Well, it's the SPX divided by. Um, oh, divided by the the government spending, yeah. but it's it's real government okay. spending. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so again, right. I mean, you see the you see the trend, and the, the it never goes off the trend all that much. Um, uh-huh. um, so then I thought, let's do a percent change and see if just the the year over year change seems amplified during that time period. And again, I I don't I won't add the title here, but I don't think it does. Um, What's happening on it? Two thousand nine is the um, well. That's a great financial crisis. It's a great financial crisis going down yeah. and up. Yeah, and and you know heading into the great financial, you know the, the dot com bubble and and through the two thousand eight, yeah. obviously see the big acceleration. So nothing terribly mm. wild happening there. Um, mm. Let's see. Next up, give me one second here. Next up is, yeah, I decided to divide it out by bank credit as well. And again, nothing wild, uh, it, nothing mm-hmm. nothing off the trend during yeah. ZERP. And finally, we get to housing prices. And this is where things do maybe get a little interesting. Okay. Oh, yeah. We do see an acceleration, but this is rate of change. I, I mean, this, this is a housing price by, this is a housing price divided by government spending. And, and I don't, I think the argument can be made <laughs> much more forcefully that there are greater tax advantages to put your money into uh, stocks than it is just for your house per se. Um, but I think there are tax advantages. So, I mean, I think part of the long-term trend in house could be described by government spending. I haven't thought through it as much as I have for stocks, um, but certainly you get a reacceleration and then a flat line. I mean, you get right back to trend. So, uh, you, you know, you're going to get the bounce from kind of mean reversion. Yeah. But then you're right back to yes. trend, right? <laughs> like yeah. you only got pushed That's off trend. Um, yeah. And this is this is a really interesting chart. The final one right here. This is just a housing price, not not rate of change. Uh, yeah, not not percent change from a year year ago. This is just the housing price divided by government spending. Uh, right. With, with you know the time period of ZERP. And and what I what I really want to show too, and I'll bring this up. Um, here is I have the same chart pulled up on the Fred website. So let me transition to that screen real quick. Do I, do I have this right? Yeah, I do. Okay, here it is overlay. This is the exact same chart that you just saw. Excuse me, Sli- slightly different because the way I calculate the, the ultimate government debt is different than what the Fred does for their uh, for their data. Yeah. I have to sneeze. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, so the blue line is is again uh, government debt. Uh, the Case Shiller U.S. House Index divided by government debt, and then I overlaid the interest rate. Again, I just don't. <laughs> I'm just not seeing anything. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Give me your feedback now. And I have some other things, other people, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm trying to steel man this, but give me your feedback and then I can kind of go into other objections that I think would make sense here that, that I, don't, okay. I don't see. Go ahead. Um, I agree with you that <laughs> I, I, I think I'm following your narrative. Divide out the government spending. Doesn't look like Zerp is uh, creating any big asset price inflations. I think what what I would just say is that okay, maybe you've cherry picked a few data series, and yeah, you you got lucky. It worked out to to, to you know that the ZERP uh, narrative that ZERP is not is not asset yes. price inflationary yep. Yep. just happens to work out. But oh, you know, if you p- pick some other assets now, you know, yep. yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'd like to see okay. someone just come up. Like yep. imagine you real real macro econ guy comes up. And, and puts a few time series up and says wrong. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That zero interest rates are inflationary. Here's here's a time series for it. That that's all I would say is that is that um, to tr- truly steal man the MMT case that ZERP is is not inflationary is is not um is not regressive. It's actually progressive. It allows government to inject more currency. To make that case, you just want to maybe get a few um you know 
all econ nerds to try try and attack attack your argument. Yeah. Just to you know steal man it. Yeah. But I yeah I agree with you. I okay. reckon they're going to have a hard time. Um, <laughs> let's do that because one of the things I just they probably won't even bother taking you on. Well, know. yeah, no, they're not going to. They're going to take screenshots on their phone of some chart and then. Da, 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 I... <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> What happened to your sound? Oh, no. Uh, I think everyone else can hear me right now, and we can hear you. Um, can Are you muted? Chat, let me oh, know. I'm muting myself. <laughs> let me know if you can hear both of us right now, chat. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, if uh, we can get an answer here in just a second. I can hear you very faintly. Okay. So, fading. Um, okay. The chat can hear us both. Bij, I think it might be on your side. Okay, man. Uh, yeah, I might have bumped the volume. Let's okay. Create Sorry. Go ahead, a. Then. We're gonna we're gonna do this in real time. We're gonna do create a data frame from Y Finance using the ticker symbol ticker history max. Okay. Um. Yeah, we want to drop that. And then let's just uh, I X I C D F. I, I think what we want to yeah is that the yeah okay that's good. Um, cause cause my my argument would be here's here's going to be the next here's going to be the next part of my argument. The next part of my argument yeah. is going to be that um, the next part of my argument is that there are. It is just a regaging of where flows go. Yeah. I, I think what yeah. we'll find out is I think during ZERP, the NASDAQ far outperformed the Russell because in a hmm. zero interest rate regime, uh, with zero interest rates using a discounted cash flow model to create a valuation of a company when the interest rate is zero um that means any cash flow is equally as valuable into the future as it is today um yeah. yes and that means the valuation of a company <laughs> can go to infinite right i mean, I mean effectively it goes to infinite i mean or you know it gets on that path um and so relative to value stocks, you know, tech and growth stocks look far more appealing. Um, I, it, I didn't quite understand what you meant by go to infinity. Uh, I'd have to, I'd have to re, uh, rethink through. Um, when, when you have, when you have a zero interest rate, I, I mean, it, it, infinity is probably not the right word there. When you have a zero interest rate, the valuation of a company is, uh, especially a company that that um, doesn't make any profits, right? Um, that future cash flow from that company looks the same today. It maybe is a better way to put it. Looks the same today as it does ten years from now, at a zero interest rate. Um, where so it, it, it doesn't change. So what do you mean by going to infinity? Well, yeah, divide? that was. A, that was, yeah, I, I mean, that was, that was I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, I, I could have phrased this better. Um, <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is, a, that's all right, man. I, I'm the dumb one here. Probably. A, 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 a tech stock looks a lot more valuable at zero interest rates than it does at 10% interest rate, right? Be, because you have to discount the future cash flow by the, the risk free rate today, right? Okay. Um, and so if you can get 10% on your money risk-free today, eh, that, that, that tech stock, I mean, effectively, uh, a, a, a tech stock that has no profit, right? Like, uh, take for example, you know, you know, the, the, the bird or arc or, you know, any other of these companies, the, 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 um, the fake meat company, right? I yeah. mean, the minute, the minute the interest rate, the minute the risk-free rate is 10%, um, a company that's not making any profits has no gotcha. value, you know, has no value to yeah. it, right? I mean, no one's going to put money yeah, into yeah. it, right? I mean, that's why the NASDAQ collapsed. So on the flip side, ZERP would allow these to company would allow these companies to, to look, right. Val right, to look valuable. To the zombie. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, so, gotcha. 
Yeah, if, if there's no competition for labor and so forth. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> so that's that's part of it, right? <laughs> this is this is part of it, actually. No, I mean you bring this up, right? Because uh, and that's like that's a good counter, um, because you do need like you are going to want companies at a zero interest rate policy. If you're not at full em employment, then then you are going to get kind of a withering away of an economy, right? And if you're not encouraging you you know you, you're not yeah. spending on the government side you're going to get a withering away um yeah. and that's why i made those qualifiers at the outset a zero interest right. rate in and of itself doesn't solve anything and actually can right. be very detrimental right i mean right. If, if you if we had let's just say the debt ceiling hits right and there's no spending and then you went to a zero interest rate <laughs> you're just going to oh, yeah, add calamity yeah. right you're going to add calamity yeah, yeah. on top of calamity right um yeah yeah Assuming you could still pay interest on the bonds, right? I mean, assuming like that, right. that was the one thing holding out. The one thing, yeah. Um, and, right. and that's why I made those qualifiers at the outset. You have to have those things in place first before a zero It'll interest rate. It'll make sense now. Yeah, yeah. yeah before yeah. a zero interest rate um, is, is, is what you'd want. Um, yeah, if you, if you don't want the zombies and everything. Yes, yeah. yes. So my, my thought is in a zero interest rate, you'd see some asset inflation. Mm. Um You'd see some asset price inflation. I think we're good here on the date now. Good, good, good. Hmm. Um, with uh, with the Nasdaq. Uh, let me ask you guys: are, Would you be? Would it be boring if I just coded here for a second to to test my hypothesis? Would you rather I wait until next week to get you the answer, or is this kind of intriguing well, to see? Just in, put on in, put on in, some radio here <laughs> in, in, right. in in real time. PJ, if you want to talk while I do this, uh, go for it. <laughs> but. Um, I, I, I no, gotta, okay, I gotta, you can do some A A M S I or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta make sure. Um, okay, well, you you focus on the coding. It's a bit hard to talk and code at the same time. So, um, I will say, well, I mean, I I had some other things that I could talk about a little bit. I just want to mention the chat. Go go to the Applied MMT podcast because at um at the very end of the last episode. Um, they did when I was chatting to Andy and Ryan. Um, I don't I forget how it came up, but Ryan is um, uh, a good capitalist, and uh, you know, I thought, I thought we all were. In, yeah, 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 yeah. No, sure, sure. And uh, and I, I I did this sort of cringe nerd, nerd thing of saying, well, is is capitalism the way Marx defined it? And and then there's other, another capitalism where you just are interested in private enterprise. You know, wh why would you not want that? In, in any any poli political economy should should want some private enterprise because you know you don't want the state the central government dictating the color of your underwear or your or your sneakers and so we sort of agreed there and then and then i um i think it was because ryan had been reading some book um on adam smith which focused on his non-economics work pointing out that really his he wasn't really an economist and and people think of him as the founding father of capitalism or whatever but i mean first of all marx came later agreed with a lot of smith stuff which was wrong and so it all messed messed everything up but what adam smith really was pretty good on was moral um mor morals and ethics and that sort of thing so were a lot of other classical philosophers at the time um but he even got that wrong and it was really interesting because because I, I had a look at the book that Ryan recommended and it was pretty good. Uh, but then the current modern thinker, Sam Samuel Bowles, um, has written some really good books. One is the Cooperative Species, human humans, how human nature is is not uh, Darwinian. It's not not red in tooth and claw. It's not it's not competition. It's mostly cooperation. Uh, you just don't see it on the news because the news uh, amplifies you know all the sort of <laughs> all the uh clickbait stuff and all the sensationalism and um and bowles is he's, he's more of a behavioral economist so he's not he's not really mmt aware but it's good stuff because he talks about how um uh monetary economics using what they regard as as incentivizing you know quote unquote good behavior be perverse and short circuits human moral natu natural normal 
human moral thinking and cooperation short circuits that and turns people into uh you know mindless people who just think about prices there's some really really good experiments that people have done showing that when you price something in a bad and in, in, in a way that you think is going to incentivize good behavior it can have the opposite effect and it and it like removes people's compulsion to to act morally and act altruistically so i really recommend that stuff and i only just hinted or touched on the at the end of the applied mnt podcast on that topic and uh so it's, it's a good one to look at so what adam smith got right is that morals are an important part of economics what he got wrong is that um you can't you should never assume people are bad and selfish and greedy so what machiavelli adam smith all of those maybe even others or well, certainly many others what they what they said is that it was in, in their time in their context and probably it's infected us to this day the idea in politics was you assume humans are fundamentally selfish and greedy even though you know it's false so you got to let that sink in adam smith and them they knew humans are basically altruistic and cooperative but they were saying that if you want to be a good politician or a law lawmaker you've got to assume the worst in people sounded kind of reasonable in their time in in history because you know they didn't have social science research and stuff but the current findings are that's completely the wrong thing to do which kind of makes sense it's kind of like an idiot's approach to economics it's like why don't you assume what is actually the case maybe that would work better turns out it does so it turns out if you assume people are altruistic and cooperative you make law get it out, out of the way of people to allow them to think cooperatively altruistically so how do, how do you do that you don't shrink their spending power you, you 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 make sure they have enough spending power to make moral decisions and there's all sorts of ramifications along these lines that I, I really recommend people go if you've got time you know have a read of samuel bowles and or maybe just uh, pull up one of his lectures they're pretty good so i thought that was all fascinating stuff and uh the stuff that I've been reading about the last week or so. And that was a really neat part of the podcast as well. I, I, I appreciated that while I was listening to it. O- almost cool. almost as much as the compliments of me. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Anytime, uh, man. Anytime. Um, all right, I did it. I pulled up the chart. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna- to... I just want to see what this looks like. Out of, yeah, if I if I remove the if I remove the log scale, it, it really it really shows the distortion of uh, of the dot com bubble in yeah. the um, in the Nasdaq here. And uh, here's the results uh, pre dot com bubble. Uh, I mean, if anything, it, it, you know, rates were relatively higher back in the uh, '80s, heading into the the, the dot com bubble era. Uh, kind of downward sloping returns over time obviously dot com bubble it blows up and then here is can you guys see my mouse cursor yeah yeah here is zerp um and then we'll even call you know from from the end of 15 through 2019 i mean we started we we finally ditched zerp but it was still you know the relatively low interest rate period still um so we you know continued to see some growth from there and i just want to make sure that i yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is all right. So, um, I don't, uh, yeah, I think maybe a little asset price inflation from the NASDAQ side of things, uh, makes sense. Maybe, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I scroll on up to the, uh, the S and P here, do we have, yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit more than the S and P, uh, okay. but nothing extreme. Um, right. It, and it's worth pointing out too that it's not like interest rates were just diving heading into the dot com bubble, uh, or uh, the the housing bubble. Um, yeah. I, I just, I really, I really think that uh, Ty. I hope you're still here because I, I really think Steve Keen just kind of has it right. I, I mean, I, I think these these you know these asset bubbles happen because the private debt cycle for you know probably more behavioral or. Um, uh, uh policy yeah, a bit re- of psychology yeah behavioral and policy issues kind of converge to allow banks to go wild for for a bit right uh um, right well they want to make they want to find creditworthy worthy borrowers no matter what 
so that what they were doing was cooking the books by by um, inventing a whole lot of credit credit worthy borrowers, the ninjas, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you can't put that on low interest rates, for God's sake. Uh... It's just pure, pure greed, <laughs> unregulated. Like you know, someone someone uh, tied William Black's hands behind his back or, or fired him, and there's no no one enforcing any of the uh, anti fraud regulations and so forth. So yeah, that's, that's completely different to a zero interest rate story. Yeah, yeah. Um. So the question mm. is actually, you brought it up. You, you brought up a good point that that you just went over. Um, and the question is from here god i wish i had a rewind button because you, you said it perfectly <laughs> and, and i need to i i need to uh <laughs> i i wish yeah the, the, uh, editing suite needs yeah, to be pro- it, it, up leveled up here oh my god it's it's <laughs> i should share a picture of the setup here guys i have so you, many you screens can't, in front of me you can not actually go on youtube and, and rewind us on youtube i could i could what, what is it you just anyway. said because because I, I, th- I think the next thing is um Okay, here it is. Actually, here's the next point, right? Okay, so so let, let's just say, let's just say, ZERP maybe causes some asset price inflation in asset classes that uh, are particularly sensitive to things like the you know discounted cash flow valuations, right? right. Okay. Um, the the follow up. Say that. Say- more people what's that <laughs> discounted cash flow evaluations that's that's a bit a little bit like me saying you know cork glue on plasma to you <laughs> <laughs> i vaguely understand what you mean um all I, I guess all i'm saying is maybe this is where i, I the, the infinity thought was is that yeah, it, yeah, yeah. at a zero interest rate the the the, pr- the price of any stock um starts to become uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to say pointless, but any stock all of a sudden has a value um, w- w- at zero interest rate. Um, but when the government's going to hand out free money to you, yeah. all, all of a sudden you have a decision to make, right? Yeah. Um, right. Now I, I get that any individual stock might not have value, right? I, I mean, the, the, the value for some companies might be so <laughs> small that you know, there will be a better company to invest in, but, um, that, that's kind of the point that I'm, I think I was getting at, um, just Adam just mentioned VC firms doing their thing. Are are they a huge effect on, in macroeconomics? I don't know. Don't forget the the role. VC firms, VC firms, firms. right. Have a model where they fund a whole lot of crap. Like you know, just yeah, hoping one know, of them wins out. Crap, crap shoots it, and then every one, once in a while, one of them becomes a billion dollar. Yes, uh, one one like, is Facebook. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so two counter arguments to the argument that I've built so far, or at least another, we have one direction, another direction we're going to go, and kind of a counter a counter argument. Uh, yeah, probably I, can. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading that question. Ken, um, I, I haven't gone down the the rabbit trail of of stock valuation directly. Uh, actually, applied MMT podcast. I know Adam and and um, oh, Ryan. Am I forgetting? I'm forgetting the other guy's name. Ryan. Um, I, I think it's Ryan. Actually, works in that world and probably does some of that stuff. So he could he could give you maybe a better rundown of uh, how that all plays out. But uh, the other counter is that uh, on the flip side, that maybe higher interest rates decrease the value of assets and i I mean i have no (laughs) this gets tricky and i mean this is this is where kind of the fun gets in um and i'm gonna go on a little bit of a spiel here but i would say the real interest rate maybe i mean you got to discount inflation inflation relative to the interest rate yeah yeah yeah. here's here's kind of my argument as to why I, I, I think it's not as, as simple, and I think there are dynamics that are at play, uh, and, and I kind of have, you know, a Minsky model in my head when I think about this, right? Like, you, you, mm-hmm. you know, you have, you have hoses with different flows that are plugging into <laughs> to, yeah. to different, you know, to different inputs that are plugging into different outputs. And and uh, a guy on Twitter who uh, gives me a hard time, but I, I appreciate it. I mean, he's a smart guy and 
generally um, can can uh, you know doesn't <laughs> doesn't take himself too seriously. Um, uh -huh. One of the points he made to to kind of the counter argument I had, uh, or to, to to my argument, his counter argument was um, that. Uh, well, I'll just read it out. It's, it's ludicrous to think that relatively limited dollars going to those uh, with, I think he meant money, uh, by definition yeah. with the highest uh, uh, marginal propensity to save, would not be overwhelmed by the reduction of aggregate demand uh, across the whole economy when you're going to increase interest rates. So there, there are a couple pieces there. Um, one, which he's not bringing up that's separate, is that there seems to be dynamic that when you get a sudden decrease in asset prices from kind of a Minsky standpoint, that can cause enough of a shock to the banking system where you can get you know, an unstop unstoppable crash, right? Um, Maybe, like Australia might be going into. The thing is, the point is that Warren would make is that until it reaches that, that tipping point you, you've got like a higher interest rate people who are in debt right as long as you've got future income flow uh the banks are going to lend to you so the yes, you don't actually yes, drop yes, drop yes. aggregate demand yes you yeah, increase yeah, yeah, aggregate yeah. demand yeah that was Come okay on. this is what i responded to him i, I he's I, he might be watching i don't know he, he just uh you know if, if you are here you can grad say hi man um, uh, you know, as much as we banter, I, you, you, you're one of the you're one of the ones I like on on the other side. As much as we banter, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, good good people, frenemies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think it is ludicrous <laughs> I, to, to to think some of this because I I would argue the the sudden increase. Let's just take housing prices for example. The sudden increase in housing prices that we saw in 2021 um, were, were primarily because of of the the direct stimulus that we that we saw in the post covid era I, I again i have no problem admitting what, what what we see as inflation um or what we saw play out is is kind of the, the pop in inflation the, the 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 price level that ultimately we landed on was in part because of the the uh, you know the direct payment right i mean that that's not the way we would want MMT spending to go right, um, and now we're seeing. I think housing now that that's played uh, played its uh, you know play through is is coming down back to kind of what I would call e equilibrium level, um, and uh, you know we're back at the normal path here. But I also, I mean, the other thing too that that none of these people take into account is we had a massive decrease in government spending in terms of uh, percent change from a year ago during the last year we we, we went uh from uh, the end of 2021 uh, into 2022 we went into uh surplus um in in, in cpi adjusted government spending for only the third time in exactly. you know 50 years right um yeah. so, so it's no surprise that we're seeing a, a collapse in, in in asset prices um and i i, I mean I, I you know if you're an mmt or you don't have to be convinced of, of the correlation yeah, you know, there convinced. You can be running a, a huge government deficit and inflation is high. It's a real surplus. So it's taking mm -hmm. taking money out of the economy in, ter in real terms. In real terms, exactly. So it's going to be recessionary biased. And so the inflation rate, I mean, sorry, the high interest rate is is actually kind of a bit like a house of cards, propping everything up for a while. Yes. Yep. Yep. So here, here's my train of thought then when it goes to the higher interest rate. One, I... Banks are gonna want. <laughs> banks are gonna want to create loans, right? I mean, I mean the, 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 the only yeah. constraint a bank has themselves is their capital, right? They're not yeah. reserve constraint. They 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 do have a capital constraint, and that that capital constraint is really a regular a regulatory constraint more than anything else, right? right? Yeah, and, and that's yeah. their own that's their own internal constraint. An external constraint is going to be the creditworthiness of. Yeah. borrowers right yeah and what is the credit worthiness of borrowers it's their income <laughs> yeah. right yep so the the the, the <laughs> next thought is okay because i i think the counter argument to that would be yeah that's that's great but um you know the interest rates suppress asset levels so so fast the interest also only goes to the wealthy to begin with, so they have a high marginal propensity to save. But I, I don't, I don't think they have as high a uh, marginal propensity to save as I think you would imagine they would, because what it, what it also, what higher interest rates also do is they increase the velocity of money. I, I can bring that chart up as I kind of continue to to go here. As you guys can see, I, I've got a lot of pieces that have to uh, <laughs> you know go yeah. together at the same time, but. 
all of a sudden, with higher interest rates, you have a fight over the currency. Um, and the yeah. the uh, uh, velocity of money increases with the higher interest rate, right? Uh, and, and if, if you've suddenly become flush with interest income money, you might just want to import a few things and sell them. Oh yeah, it's a good yeah uh, yeah, well, and, and good, all sorts uh, of other things. I, I the trickle down down effect definitely is happening at the moment. The question is just uh, what are the what are the channels for that, and uh, can they be sustained, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, yeah, I'm following you so far. I like the way you you give an MET argument and then you come back with a um, you but on the other side the argument against. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to follow this. It's going up and down a bit, though. It is. I know it's all over the place, <laughs> but it, it's kind of one of these things where you, you have to have all these pieces in place at the same yeah. time for it to make sense. Um, yeah. But yeah. but it does. I mean, I think it all pieces together. So you have this increase in velocity of money. Um, and the other thing, too, is, I, 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 and I don't get why this is the assumption that just because interest rates are high, that you're going to stop being hyper competitive, right? Like, like one of the, one of the people that came back at me was like, well, banks and businesses are getting in recession mode. W what does that mean? I, I mean, if, if you're going to stop expanding and stop growing and stop being competitive, there's someone waiting in the weeds to take your place, right? Like yeah. there's always going to be the next guy up. That's going to say, okay, you don't want to create the next iPhone. You don't want to innovate. I'll do it for you. Right. Yeah. And yeah. as long as the banks have sufficient capital, then they'll make the loan to that person if they, you, yes. you know, I mean, if, if they're if they have a credit worthy, you know, if there's a credit worthiness that's there. And of course, we know that because of the higher velocity of money, the more money into the private sector, that you know, the income channel is there for that to to, to take place. I, I just don't get that companies are going to yeah. just all of a sudden stop being capitalist in their endeavors yeah. and go into shrink mode just because the Fed tells them to. Yeah. I, Anyway. That's the key, yeah. Just just because of that, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of churn in the system, and, and then here's things the can play out. In, Go ahead. Things Sorry. can play out. In weird, things can play out in weird ways. Yeah, with a, with a lot of churn churn going on. Uh, some people will get out. Some people will get in. Did you? Did you? I'm also hanging on this like what's the school of thought that you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, there's a name for this. Apparently, <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, waiting but... for that. Uh, I don't know. You'll get it to eventually. Um, I don't know where. What's, what are you pulling out now? Oh, here velocity it is. of money. Money. Yeah, this is uh, velocity of money, and then the interest rate. Uh, just, just to kind of show my my thought in terms yeah. of what, why I think over time, a lot. You know, uh, the the turnover of money. This is this is kind of a big point for right. um, thinking about this in kind of a Steve Keen Minsky uh, Minsky sort of way that that. You know, what one of the things that you could say is that the interest rate will decrease the velocity of money, right? Um, but but I don't think it does. I mean, I think it's the exact opposite. I think the turnover of right. money right. gets exacerbated in a high interest rate environment. Um, or at least there's no evidence to, to think otherwise. So mm. you, you have this velocity of money pushing higher. You, you have this kind of, you get a, you get a hot currency at, at that point. Mm. Yeah. And then on top of that, you also have a very competitive employment market. And this is something that we were talking about earlier, right? That, yeah. that right now yeah. employees have the upper hand. They can just go find yeah. another job and they are finding other jobs, right? I mean, yeah. every week there's like another, yeah. or every month there's another half a million jobs that were created that they thought weren't but supposed to be created. The um, wild thing about that is, is that it, even that is pretty weak at the moment because of all the neoliberal sort of uh, institutional arrangements. Yeah. That could actually, that effect could actually be a hell of a lot stronger. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. But then you, then you could really get overheating and then you could uh, really see a, a, a regressive impact of high interest rates in some, some, some ways. But yet at the moment, because labor historically and in, in our lifetimes has been incredibly weak. <laughs> yeah, in, yeah, any little, yeah. In any little yeah. significant slight, uh, you know, wage demand that they can have, or at least employers looking, looking desperately looking for skilled workers is uh, is going to help. Not not the greatest way to do it, but you know that that's the current situation. I think I think again I want to want to say I think I think that's Australia is starting to feel the the feel other the side of this of thing. Okay, I, yeah. Uh, I, I did a little digging yeah. on Australia, but I, I couldn't find any data that's yeah. readily available that I'm, you know. Again, I'm, also, you, we've been talking about the USA numbers, whereas all this zero interest rate effects have been evident in Japan for Japan so long for, now. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah. it's like, 
uh, it's really annoying people who just ignore that or just say it's the oh, it's their culture. I think Bill Mitchell's mentioned yes, they do have a savings kind of culture. They do have a cons- a culture that uh, emphasizes conservation. There's even a Japanese word for it. Um, Mori, oh, I'm not going to say it because I butcher it, but uh, but yeah, when they increase their GST, the goods and services tax, VAT, whatever you call it, um, it has a terrible effect, perverse effect. They, they want to decrease the government deficit by raising the goods and services tax, tax yeah. and then the, the Japanese consumers are very conscious of their budget, household budgets, so they stop, they yeah, you know, cut back on their consumption and, and then it um uh but but also that the higher tax return yeah it, it causes problems for households and so they end up increasing the government deficit as a buy as an effect side effect because it just increases uh benefit payments and that sort of thing um where was i going with that oh yeah just to japan just to compete with other countries because i think i think the, the narrative that you're giving here probably holds across most most countries on uh, yeah yeah and and then the i mean the thing is you'd have to shift it, it, it you'd have to shift it on external yeah. you'd have to shift it it'll only apply on the three axes that i explained earlier right if, if a country yeah. borrows money in another country's currency that's exactly. going to that's going to change that's it the, if they have totally no, changes it right yeah. um if they have relatively low government spending that's going to change it um, yeah. and if, if they have high or low unemployment, you know, depending on what it is, that's going to change yep. it. Yep. So if you guys were able to follow the whole time and, uh, <laughs> make anything of, 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 <laughs> of my, uh, my, my madness there, um, <laughs> good. I, I just, I don't see it, man. I, I just don't see it. And I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm okay being convinced otherwise. I, I mean, I, 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 to a certain extent, it would make yeah, it would yeah. make predicting easier. Um, but I, I really just, I really just think it's a regaging, and it's a regaging to the detriment of the bottom half. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, not, half. I, I'm not, I'm yeah. not trying to diminish that point. Um, right. So yeah, it's co- it's complicated because of the distributional effects in society, and 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 until those kick in really hard, then like Warren says, this, this, he doesn't know where this is going to end. The Fed are going to just uh, move up another twenty-five or even fifty yeah. basis points. Yep. Until until what? Until something really bad breaks, you know. Well, according to the professor they had on on that podcast that he was on uh, today, it's only going to need a hundred more. And that'll be it. So, uh, <laughs> not fifty, not twenty-five, not seventy-five. One hundred. Oh man. Not one twenty-five. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, so I, I listen. I, <laughs> I I think uh, you know that stupid meme where um, they have a, a power a, a, a surge protector, you know, a power strip, and and they have uh, one end of the power strip plugged into the power strip itself, and it goes unlimited power. You know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we finally. I mean, I, I think the economy like finally did that. I mean, I think the fed did that, right? Yeah. They, they managed to get the flow of, uh, mm-hmm. it's like a, uh, what do they call it? Laminar flow, whatever that is. Right. They managed to, but all you need is a superconductor. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've, managed pen, the, they've managed to get the, they've managed to get the, the flow continued and now we're in like perpetual motion here. Um, uh, <laughs> and the flow is just going to continue to support it. I, uh, yeah, as long as the fed, or oh, the treasury fed keeps pushing those buttons on the bonds yeah um for you traders out there uh t-r-a-d-e-r-s not not traders as in the ones who are going to be <laughs> sleeping with the enemy um for, for, for you traders out there uh, one thing i would uh, one thing i would keep in mind and, and definitely get on your radar right now is is i i think a way out of this i don't want to say a way out of this but a way this ends two ways this ends Way number one is we actually get a market crash uh, from the debt ceiling issue, and yeah. w- during that podcast, Warren Warren spelled out his his death cycle, and, and he did a really good job mm-hmm. at, at explaining it, um, and it it really solidified what it is that I think I'd understood what he was saying, and, and that is that if the 
if the debt ceiling thing hits, what, what you have to understand is that the, the way the government spends is that it will take in taxes and it will take in bond sales, right? So what the debt ceiling is going to do is it's going to stop the bond sales to to fund spending over you know short term spending, right? So yeah. it's going to stop the bond sales. So the only way that it can continue to spend is with whatever it receives in tax revenue, right? Um, and what you got to understand is it receives a lot in tax revenue and it also spends a lot <laughs> uh, on everything else. Right. Um, and whatever, you know, whatever's left over after spending on um, you know, whatever, social security, uh, wars, Medicare, that sort of stuff. Um, whatever's left over needs to be financed through, you know, what we call borrowing, but it's just the selling of, you know, selling of bonds. So when that financing ceases, you're only left the only flow left in the TGA is taxes and tax receipts are a lot. I mean, we receive a lot of taxes. Mm -hmm. It's only going to take a very little amount of time before, you know, weeks before um, you can drain the, uh, you know, the $30 trillion pool of total savings in the, uh, in the private sector. And then the effect of it will be immediately. Um, so not only will you have the, the overnight, you know, the immediate congestion that's going to take place and the plumbing of the finance sector, uh, that will have its own issues. I mean, it would only take six months before the, the swimming pool is effectively drained yeah. enough to, you know, it's, you know, it's closed for winter. Um, yeah. That's so Warren said it can happen fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then you have the knock on effect because now you don't have money, right? So you got to cut spending. <laughs> um, Can happen fast. Yeah. So spiral now. Um, there will be a, a spiral. So with that in mind, if that hits, you know, we will go into a, a, a deflationary recession without a doubt. It'll be terrible. Um, and what what will all the mainstream say? Oh, we could never have predicted this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they'll say, "Yeah, look, we finally <laughs> got what we wanted." <laughs> a oh, hard right, landing. This episode. <laughs> yeah, a hard landing. Um, and so, uh, so that's one path out of this. And then, and then, obviously, the Fed would take their foot off the gas, and rates would go back to zero, and government spending would kick back in, hopefully at you know an equal level. But if not, then we'd have you know two thousand nine all over again, maybe even worse. Um, that's one way this thing plays out. Uh, I gotta, I gotta say, man, just talking it out loud kind of makes me sick because it's, it's not, you know, yeah. it's, it's not yeah. like talking about alien abduction invasion, right? Yeah. That's never going to happen. Like, I mean, there's, yeah. there's a, uh, a non-zero chance as they say <laughs> that, yeah. I mean, it's probably a 20% chance that something like that plays out. Yeah. Um, just, just tightening my stomach a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be hell for the world. Um, and if you're an Austrian, you would imagine this is going to be, you know, it, it's going to turn out to be, um, the greatest thing ever, but I, I have gold, <laughs> yeah, gold. I, I, gold. I, have, I have news for you. It's not going to turn out very good. Um, I'm not wealthy mm. enough yet for that event to occur. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need to be in the top 1% of 1%, um, yes. before, before the, before the world, uh, economy crashes, yeah. um, before you're insensitive to it all. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing <laughs> that, that I think could bring an end to all this, so that will, I, I mean, I, the most likely scenario that brings an end to all this is, is you start seeing oil, uh, really, really push up. Uh, I think that's one way that you could get a, an effective tax, uh, big enough to kind of drain the, the, the swimming pool or drain the effect of, of the higher yeah. government spending. Um, and, and I think that is the, the likely end. And at this point, I mean, it would probably take until $300 oil, uh, to really put it, to put an end to, uh, to, to what we're seeing. But those are the two paths. Speak, speak, speaking of which, I, 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 I had a YouTube ad advertisement come on okay. uh, recently. And one of the only ones that I actually, uh, listened to full, <laughs> that, it was totally perverted because it was some dude who used to be uh, like a, uh, I think I think CIA or something like that. Okay, and he's hocking this scheme now to protect people from the coming um, Biden Armageddon, <laughs> which which is which is we're going to run out of oil. So it's oh, that okay. whole story again. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, you know, he he may, he's a probably you know he's on his grift. But you know, in in a funny way, like what you're saying is that's it's actually a one one way that could be a bit a little bit of a Armageddon. Um, Although, like uh, Warren keeps saying, there's no there's no purely financial uh, crisis that can't be fixed with a sufficient supply of uh, currency. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so uh, you know, 
people might have to drive a lot less, pay more at the petrol pump, but, but they're not going to, there's no need for an Armageddon for people yeah. to be starving. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, sensible heads. But it was interesting because, you know, the only ads that I play these days are these perverse ones that, are, <laughs> that I'm, I'm like, you know, grotesquely interested in. <laughs> the, the end of the world is coming. <laughs> sort of, you know. Uh, uh, repent, uh, repent and believe. <laughs> What's that guy's name? This, uh, uh, this, this file that oh, I forget it. Don't worry. I'm, I'm more interested in uh, maybe some questions in chat, or yeah, you, know, yeah, you wanted yeah. to talk about the, yeah. the school of thought that emerged from zero interest rates. Or Adam, I was intrigued by a couple of Adam's comments, and I wondered if he wanted to come on the live stream to explain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Absolutely. Up to you. I'll leave it up to you. Yeah, yeah. We can maybe get maybe get some guests in here. DJ Douglas. Um, yeah. MMT Bank Trader, have you done Granger causality on interest rate increase and GDP growth? Oh yeah, it's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, you're saying right now? You're saying not like in the future? Like like? Uh... <laughs> uh, have you done? Not not. Can you do now? I'm sorry. Do you want me to get him on right now? <laughs> Uh, Adam, yeah, um, is, is that what you I, were I, meaning? No, I wasn't commanding you. I was just, I was <laughs> no, just I don't even know what I'm talking about. His, no, 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 no. I'm saying to I'm, hear his comments. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing you. No, yeah, uh, are you saying when you say get him on, I have no problem bringing him on now. right now, right, right now. now, yeah, yeah right yeah, now, yeah, yeah, right now, because he because he had some thoughts, yeah, that, that uh, I'm not competent to answer to, uh, I'm not competent to uh, go into them, but yeah, you, you and he might, he might have a good discussion, yeah. Oh yeah, look at Plus, I want to hear about the school of thought. <laughs> um give me one second here. Yeah. So Douglas was telling me earlier, um, he'd come across this school of thought that like a few a decade or so ago had <gasps> yeah, yeah. Oh. managed to had come across I don't know if they come across the MT, but certainly Warren. Can you, can Warren you send him the link? Me. Can you send him the link for me? Do you got that? Oh yeah, sure, yeah. sure. I'll send you the link, Adam. Uh um yeah oh i don't know how to send it i don't know how to send it only to adam how do i do oh, that oh yeah don't don't send it in chat uh do you still have the, the twitter do you have uh the twitter a adam get on your twitter oh yeah yeah yeah, send, yeah send it I, to I, twitter. Adam on yeah. twitter yeah sure yeah this okay is, this is really cool um ken if you're still in the chat this is cool man you, he messaged me this video do you know what do you know what i am <laughs> don't answer that actually um, I, there's actually a school of thought that, um, that already made the connection that, that we did. And the school of thought is called <laughs> the Fisherians. <laughs> so I am a, I am a, a, a Neo Fisherian. And uh, this, this school of thought apparently has been out there for a while. This was uh, four years ago, so before COVID and everything. Um, and the, they, they had him on. And, and uh, you know, this is when er, er, uh, Erdogan, uh, er, Erdogan um, was going through possibly, you know, re yeah. reversing course on the, um, on the interest rate thing. By the way, this, this is Steve King's favorite guy, Irving Fisher, right? Is it is it Irving Fisher? Is, is that what sure a, a, a neo Fisherian yeah. is okay. I, thought, I don't I, know, but I yeah, thought was, I thought it was just being. You, you, you keep know. talking. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. duck that. Go it. Um. So anyway, unfortunately, the guy gave about as good as explanation as I did for everything <laughs> during the interview. I think he was a little. I think he was a little nervous. Um, yeah, probably. Uh, during the interview to really to really get it all out there. Um. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine it could be Irving Fisher. I didn't realize Irving Fisher also thought you know, the interest rate thing was backwards, but. I'm I'm convinced. I'm convinced it is. Um, yeah, Adam, jump jump on that. Because you gave him the link for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you should uh, have the link the, now. The o OBF, right? The, those are the first three. For uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, um, there he is. Uh, Adam, give me one second here. I need to go to. Three video Chrome. <laughs> this is going to be a little, little, little crazy in just a second, guys. So give me just a minute here. Um, I'm going to admit him. And Hi, Adam. Adam, welcome.
Hey guys, how you doing? Yo, what's going on? Yeah, we're having fun. We haven't even got to the fun half yet. But... <laughs> <laughs> no physics yet. Jeez, what are we doing? Um, I'm realizing, give me one second, that I need to... Bijou, can you stop sharing your screen? I, I know <laughs> normally I yeah, want, yeah. You, want you to Sorry. share your screen. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, cool. that, that is fine. And it doesn't matter. Guys, the the the... I apologize for you on the stream. It's going to make no sense what you're seeing. But um, anyway, welcome, Adam. Thank you guys for having me on. And yeah. thank you for uh, for joining the podcast, of, you know, in the last few weeks. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It's good, good time on the podcast. Um, what were you guys talking about? I, I wasn't really following the chat while I was going on my, my convoluted journey through neo uh, Fisherian. I don't know. Approach. Okay. So it was Adam who raised the, the, the venture capitalist firms. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Effect, yeah. Which I which I was not sure about. And then Ken PDX uh I think was just echoing your point about discounted cash flows. Um, but does it have any meaning for a stock that pays no dividend? Uh regardless of the interest rate question mark. And then Adam okay. replied or Adam put in, think about the private valuations before these companies went public. Oh, that's and, interesting. Uh, yeah, 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 that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what what I was really calling out there was just kind of the irrationality in the private markets and the run up of all these companies. Mm. Um so they're very divorced from the fundamentals and you know there's a reason why we work was worth supposedly worth 47 billion dollars not long ago and now it's worth something like 800 <laughs> million I think and they've raised yeah. 22 billion dollars. Um so Ryan and I actually talked about this on a recent episode of the podcast. And um, to me, and and I think this is also Ryan's conclusion is it's a lot about the institutional structures. Um, so for example, uh, you know, the Saudis accumulated huge fiscal surpluses uh, by selling oil to the U S they then allocated that money to, you know, someone like SoftBank who's making investments on their behalf. And Uber was basically Uber, WeWork, et cetera, were able to, able to you know, just continually raise VC money uh, through those accumulations of dollars by parties like the Saudis. And I think these valuations just get kind of divorced from reality and it becomes all yeah. about hype and it becomes about, you yeah. know, these private players like VCs um, just hyping up these stocks. And that's why Uber was, or I'm sorry, why WeWork was pitching itself as a tech company. And it really is out of hand. And I, I don't think the interest rates have much to do with that phenomenon. Like you, you saw the same thing in the dot-com right. bubble. That's interesting. Um, That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'd agree. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a wild, a lot of wild unregulated stuff that goes on. I mean, um, it's a great point. I'm, I'm trying to think. There's of a, a good... long list of these things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, think, think about, so the dot com bubble that was all going on with interest rates higher than where they are today. Yep. And yep. Um, think about cryptocurrency too, right? Like that's Crypto just an unregulated market yeah. that is out of control. You get getting one dressed in a black turtleneck thing doing a Steve Jobs <laughs> <laughs> printing money. Uncountable <laughs> <laughs> um, investors. That that is interesting to think about. Too, I mean, especially things like like the Saudis just just throwing money to invest somewhere. Um, There's a new generator for all that too, which is the whole, um, you know, quote unquote green uh, financing and green green energy investment, which is, can be a lot of fraud, green greenwashing, and all that. Yeah. So people yeah. people will take your money for that and sell you this idea: ah, oh, solar farms, wind farms, whatever it is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, people aren't AI. doing the due di di diligence, AI, doing due diligence, and there's no, uh, like, ombudsman or uh, yeah. overseeing yeah. oversight, uh, okay. then can be really, really bad for the un unwise investors. And the, the, I think it was also someone on the Beyond the Markets or somewhere, maybe it was actually the guy, the guy from the INET. Um, yeah, I think it was a guy from INET recently talking, well, maybe not recently, but I tuned into an episode of it. They were talking about, uh, you know, the financial fraud and all this sort of stuff. And, and, you know, he mentioned crypto and everything. Uh, and, uh, 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 
I just, I just lost my train of thought there. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, yeah. He, he mentioned some, he mentioned some of the effects of how, oh yeah, that's right. So it was the small retail investors, people who were, who were like, I think the phrase he used was some, some dude he was talking to uh, who got into crypto and, or FTX or something like that early. He said, yeah, well, you know, the, you know, I don't have decent jobs. Everything sort of sucks. I'm, I'm just going to ride my surfboard at, at the tips of the tip of the surfboard on the tip of my feet, or something like that. Some phrase he used. I'm sure the surfies all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes out the edge edge with his tiptoes on his surfboard. So he's riding the crypto wave, and it's you know, and and these these people at the time, early crypto investors, were just breaking it in, and um, you know, th- those who weren't just completely greedy like i have a have a disabled friend who was w- working he has a hard time working but he's really intelligent guy uh he got into crypto early and got out early made like his life savings he's retired now and he's younger than me <laughs> so, <laughs> so just a crazy crazy world when this happens but of course a lot of people are going to get burned yep. so bad yep um adam god i yeah, yeah, Adam. Yeah, I remember the comment I was going to make. It's going to completely change the subject, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam just threw out uh, the the AI invest. You know, that AI is going to be the next investing thing, which is really, which is really unfortunate uh, because I actually think there's a lot of cool things that are going to come out of AI, uh, and, and I hope the AI world doesn't get completely burnt yeah. <laughs> the way. I mean, I, I, blockchain blockchain is in the bed bit of software it's, it's pretty boring and normal software you think about it yeah, blockchain is not bad yeah, yeah. I, neural networks and ai and machine learning is not bad it's it, it's the people who leverage it to, yeah, who yeah. can just create some fictional company and, and sell it to investors that, that label everything as ai adam yeah. do you, you work in banking correct i don't work in banking i work in um i used to work in venture investing so i know a okay. bit about okay. this world okay okay uh, there you go Okay, I, I was wondering if you had the, you know, still the pulse on, on if there's about to be a ton of money. By a ton, I mean like you know an unnecessary large amount thrown <laughs> at, at, at AI. I mean, is this is this is is every company going to be rebranding as AI <laughs> something or another? I mean, is that going to be the next thing? But um, it seem it seems like that is it seems like that's the wave. Um, to me, the use cases in AI seem a lot more legitimate than the use cases in crypto ever did. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, you you can see, you yeah. know, that people are actually making great use of these AI applications today. Yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think there was any, or th- there's been really much useful to happen in in crypto in the past ten years. Um, but it attracted so much investment, regardless, because, you know, because of the ability to just participate in unregulated markets. I think. Yeah, yeah, and fly under the radar, black markets, drug drug uh, trade, and all that. They they don't want to see they don't want to see the, the IRS uh, look at their look at their accounts but so they prepared to make massive losses in crypto just just to, to keep you know whatever to keep below the radar also ken ken pdx you know blockchain isn't bad yeah use this is useful to crypto yeah so the whole mining thing people some people who don't know about it might not be aware but mining and ledgering but bitcoin was a massive energy waste disgusting waste yeah. but blockchain doesn't do it. blockchain is just distributed ledger so you could re- you could have a central bank digital currency you know if if you're not in the usa or somewhere where people just think it's a whole central bank conspiracy thing but somewhere else you know somewhere somewhere else when people sort of semi trust their government you could you could do rowan gray's uh central bank digital currency stuff and have wallets or you know and you could use some sort of distributed ledgering but also we know that it's like this is what SETI is, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It was just distributed computing, which is really, really the only really <laughs> interesting thing that blockchain does. And so it's like, but it does short circuit moral, your moral compass, because if you're, if, you, if you're farming out your trust in people to, um, to some sort of automated ledger, you're removing your ability or the necessity to trust someone in a, in trade or in a transaction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you bring things a bit more local uh, and proper green, not not green washing, uh, this this is a huge amount of advantage to to, to to be had there in terms of just getting local economies economies more invigorated. Yeah, and uh, 
I also, um, what was the other thing in the chat there? I gotta, uh, I gotta ask what we have Adam on. Adam, I wanna, yeah, I wanna get ahead. you, I wanna get you included. I, I'm, I'm curious. Did, did you, did you listen? I mean, did you have any holes to poke in my, in my, my overall theory? Um, well, you know, how, how do you see it from your end yeah. um, regarding kind of interest rates, asset prices, uh, how they might affect the economy? Also, what, what, also, what, do you, Adam, do you want to have a go at answering Charles' grip? Why is the natural rate of interest zero? <laughs> Two questions for you. There. <laughs> um. I'll start with Douglas's question. Um, so my sense, and and obviously I don't think anyone knows how, how this ends, but um, I don't know. I, I don't see the economy slowing down. It seems like the economy, if anything, is picking up steam. Um, I don't know what this whole thing means for, you know, stock market valuations. I don't know how it ends if the Fed keeps raising. Um but I don't, I don't think it's slowing the economy down in any conventional sense. I, did you guys happen to see the, um, the article in Barron's that J.W. Mason published recently? I did not. No. So he, he, he did. Oh he, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw, I saw it. I saw it pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's Mason, worth yeah. checking out because he, he basically he wrote an article um, and he, he posted a study that was I, I forget who conducted the study. It was two academics. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. And they reviewed they reviewed something like 2000 earnings calls. And in those earnings calls, what they were looking for was investment decisions and whether or not those decisions were based on interest rates. And they found that interest rates were almost never cited in terms of companies going forward with investment decisions. It's always about, you know, whether or yeah. not there's demand for the services that the companies are providing or the goods that the companies are providing. And that's very consistent with MMT, right? Like if the demand is there, then companies are going to find a way to make the investment regardless of the cost of capital. And, yeah. you know, that's my sense as well. Like in, intuitively, that makes sense in this in this particular study that, that Mason cites. Um, that's what the data shows. And that's yeah. obviously counter to to uh, textbook economic theory. But, you know, yep. if I were to if I were to guess, I'd say that's you know, that's that seems like the case. More income means more spending means, um, you know, firms are more likely to make investments. Um, so, yeah, who knows how it ends? I'm in the same boat as you guys, but um, it will be interesting to see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did read that thread as well. Yeah, um, I just posted good. the thread. I'm also showing it. I don't know if you can see this right now, uh, Adam, but uh, I'm showing the thread on the stream. Yeah, I thought I thought it was a brilliant. Yeah. I mean, that was brilliant. And, um, and I think this final thing too was, uh, if they actually, if people actually think higher, higher rates lead to, uh, uh, lower, lower inflation. And I think most people in, in the population actually disagree, uh, with that. So I, I thought it was pretty, I thought it was pretty amazing. Um, that even, you know, you know, it's really interesting too, if, if, if you just explain to like a, you know, Joe business owner, right. Uh, kind of the MMT idea or the, I'll call it the, the, he called it the MMT idea because I feel like even some MMTers don't exactly, uh, <laughs> big name MMTers don't exactly explain it for what it truly is. But um, if you if you explain to to Joe, business person, uh, higher interest rate just means more, you know, higher prices at every at every corner. They they get that kind of intuitively. Uh, right. you, you don't have to explain that to them in any technicality. So. Um, but but that it also doesn't decrease the demand for them to do it either, right? I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, hamper their desire for growth um, in and of itself. Um, can 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 PDX just uh, mention? Yeah, it, 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 I think Steve Keen also does some lectures on this about mentions the hurdle rates. So you you've got to get over some some minimum. Um, cost of investment and if you get over that hurdle then then you're good to go so um if you're projected yeah future earnings uh, get you over that hurdle uh then like i said yeah then it's hard to see to where go. this ends yeah uh, zero interest rates why are they natural charles gripe in the chat <laughs> Adam, you do you want, want to give to us? That do one? you want to give this a go? Uh, since we got you on, or uh, is this, I will. Uh, I'll, put, put I'll on, give it a go. Put, as, put you as on the, the spot. honorary guest. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I mean, put it on your spot. I, I, I can uh, give it a go too, but I'm more interested in hearing Adam talk. Sure. Um, so yeah, the the so basically the the reason that the natural rate of interest is zero is because the government has a uh, monopoly on the currency, and it determines the. 
you know, the, it, it solely determines the rate of interest and yes, indeed. the natural, you know, the natural rate of interest on a dollar, for example, is zero. And it's a policy decision whether or not, um, you know, it, issuing bonds, for example, is a policy decision that the government has decided to do. It doesn't have to offer that option. Um, it could just issue dollars that don't pay interest. Yeah. And if you're on a fixed exchange rate and your terms of trade and go south, so you, you, you find yourself uh, not able to export enough to, uh, quote unquote, pay for um, the inputs you desire, uh, then you're going to, the government's going to be ten tending to want to uh, increase the interest rate to keep keep demand for its uh, currency. But if you don't increase your real investments and, and, and uh, increase your exporting capacity for the pay for on a fixed fixed exchange rate, uh, then you're going to keep, you might be keeping on hiking up the year interest rate. And, uh, you know, then you get into an upwards problem there and uh, eventually you're going to uh, have to, De devalue your currency or just do the natural thing just go to a floating exchange floating rate exchange rate yeah yeah and then you not you don't care what the interest rate is if you may as well make it zero because you don't want to give people with already money more money in proportion to how much money they already have <laughs> i think i'm gonna get that uh, i don't have any tattoos but you, you know how you know how people will get like the uh you know, like some Bible verse tattooed on their bicep or something, you know, that's, that's going to be, <laughs> that's going to be, I'm going to have that Warren Mosler tat on me. Um, well, I'll, I'll do it if it's one of those kids ink tats that I can, yeah, they can off. come off. They can come <laughs> off. That'd be funny. Hey, Adam, yeah. thanks for, thanks for jumping on, man. Um, this, this is kind of cool. Adam runs, uh, along with Ryan, the applied MMT podcast. Do you guys have any cool guests coming up soon or, uh, any, anything, anything fun happening in the next few weeks? Yeah. Th thanks for having me on guys. This was fun. Um, we are trying to get Joe Weisenthal from Bloomberg. Oh, that'd be on, awesome. Oh yeah. yeah which yeah. would be great. Yeah. Uh, because he's, you know, he's very involved in MMT. I think he was at the, uh, the Levy Institute conference okay. this past summer. And then, uh, Mike Norman, we've also been DMing with. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. So hopefully we can get him on as well. Um, and then eventually we'd like to have Mosler on as well. But I know you guys just had him on. I think he likes to spread out the uh, the appearances, but we would love to have him on at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd be interested. I, uh, hopefully you can get um, hopefully get Mike Norman on. I followed him on Twitter, uh, but he has yet to to follow me back. So I, I, I know we're essentially in the exact same space where we're competition. But yeah. I, I love yeah. I love him. And uh, hopefully hopefully he's, he's willing to reach out to me sometime. Uh, so I'd love to see you guys chat with him. So that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Cool. Uh, well, thank you guys. And, uh, have a good night. I'll, uh, I'll keep watching. And, yeah. Right on, uh, man. Right on. Have a good night yourself. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining real quick. Yeah. You got the link. If you want to jump on again, just, uh, yeah. Hold up. All right. Uh, give me one second here, everybody. In the fun, in the fun half. I, I can, can you uh, can you share your not, I, can you share your screen again, Bijou? <laughs> oh, I sure can. Yeah, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, everybody. It, it, <laughs> for the for the, I I don't use any fancy software beyond OBS. Um, I just kind of get stubborn uh, after a while. So I know some of the the fancier streaming softwares, you know, will pull Windows and have yeah the all this stuff built in, but I do everything manually. So it has to all be aligned correctly <laughs> for it to work. Uh, -huh. uh what yeah, were we going to say though? Uh, Bijou. Uh, we can... Oh yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. First, firstly, I'd, I'd like to have the chat engaged again, but I think we've, we've gone through most of the questions. There's an inter interesting little debate there on the uh, interest rate. Um, oh, Charles has so many questions, but I don't want to type them all out on my phone. Charles, Charles Grip. Um, well, don't worry. I think you can uh, send them, send them Douglas's way, and um, or, <laughs> send them um, Bijou's way. Well, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, you're yeah. the public. You're yeah. the public face here. Yeah, who, no, who no, no. the email yeah. or, the, or DM, Twitter, DM, DM or, me on Twitter when you get home yeah, or something yeah. like that, and because uh, we can definitely we, go. We'll, 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 we'll try to, you know, unless one of us is terribly ill, we'll try to 
yeah. make this a regular weekly thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, usually it should only be an hour, but we always go way long. Uh, and so it's just a matter of uh, getting around to questions. And so definitely, um, definitely flick, flick your, all your questions our way. We, we'll tackle all of them, even if we're completely ignorant. <laughs> I'll always give you always give you an opinion. I'm not I'm not guaranteeing it's a good answer or not. Uh yeah. Uh, Some of our chat people in our chat are, are far more uh, aware and intelligent or have better background knowledge than, than I do. It is amazing. I mean, we you know, at any given time we have between what 10, 15 people watching live at any given any given live stream we'll get about a, a hundred people roll in throughout the live stream. And I'd say maybe, you know, we got about 20, 25 people that get active in the chat. Out of you 20, 25 that get active in the chat, it's amazing the, uh, um, the, 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 the breadth and the, the, the depth of knowledge uh, and the diversity of knowledge uh, that we have in here. It's uh, some, somehow, Bijou, you and I got pretty lucky with quite a, uh, quite a uh, core crowd here. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, so if, if we can't answer the question, someone else certainly can. Um, we did. We definitely have a, have a lot of interests to share, and and it's diverse as well. So I, I'm definitely interested more um, a lot in physics and science and stuff like that. And Douglas is in AI, and on AI side, I'm also interested in the philosophy, consciousness, and mind, and all that sort of thing. Um, but I tell you, in science news recently, here's a little bit of a science segment. Two things that stuck in my memory, or maybe three things stuck in my memory from Holzenfelder's recent newsletter. One, one was uh, fusion. These researchers have got um, proton-boron colliders um, producing fu nuclear fusion. The really, the really cool thing about using boron rather than tritium is tritium is extremely rare. And, uh, you know, so you have to go to some expense to, to make the stuff. Boron and hydrogen are, are, are completely, are very hugely abundant use borons as uh as uh regulators and fission reactors but yeah so, so it's cool because when you collide them um not only can you get fusion but also there's no neutron radiation and i can't emphasize how that how huge a thing that is because neutron radiation messes up everything surrounding your system so it irradiates your whole laboratory <laughs> it's it, so it brittles metal and all sorts of stuff the only the only downside of that, of course, there's always a downside in these things, is that um, it's a it's a collision that you have to generate uh, using a lot of electricity. <laughs> to begin with, yeah. Well, it's uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I so I... so they actually create a sustained like uh, self sustaining fusion reaction with boron boron fuel. You have to um, go to like a billion degrees Celsius rather than a million. So yeah. The only time it's a, it's a... I the only time I ever use my uh, my power cord over here that I could I could demonstrate sticking the the one end into the other to <laughs> to show you unlimited power. It sounds like that's what this uh, re reactor is. Uh... It's all in the quantum vacuum. Uh, yeah, another another cool one I mentioned. I, I, I I'm only doing this because I'm assuming people don't have time to listen to Sabina. But anyway, the other cool one was um, wood. So you can t you can get dead wood to absorb more carbon yeah yeah yeah. yeah. dead wood dead wood so okay. you dry you dry out the wood you frizz it you remove lignin from it using chemicals and uh whatever you kind of bleach the stuff shrinks the wood in volume by like i don't know like four times smaller volume and then it'll grow and then you can just chuck chuck in uh co2 into the wood and how do you, it absorbs how do you, it how do you chuck it in Oh, you just, uh, you know, um, chemicals. Come on. I mean, <laughs> chemistry, chemistry, you wave it, a chemistry it, wand. It sounds like you're making... Don't, don't talk to a physicist about it this. It sounds like you're making the wood alive again if it's going to start... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, to, it's, you have to sort of inject it somehow. Um, it, it, I don't think it's passive, so I think you... Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah you, you have yeah. to inject the, the CO2 into the wood so yeah maybe it's it's not completely scalable but it's an interesting interesting kind of proposal you could imagine scrubbers being made out, made out of dead wood i suppose okay 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 uh, yeah All right, yeah i thought larry summers too we yeah. have summers and craigman and powell uh, if they're there they're, they're, they're not very 
that we i think we've cowered them into submission uh so speak up we we had some questions come in that i do want to get to real quick Go ahead, man. question number one uh do you think chat gpt will reach a point where it can recognize that something was written they, they already have a, a little bot um figured out to, to do that uh, to, 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 to detect if something was written by chat GPT. So yes, I think they'll get there and going forward, it'll be a cat, uh, cat and mouse game for, for a cat and mouse. Um, you could also employ people to, to do the checking. If you, if you converse long enough, you realize it's an, it's a artificial thing, not a real human. So it's the Turing. It makes the Turing test easier to pass, but it's not foolproof. Like right? you, you can, um, you think, can always eventually detect that it's that it's not intelligent, but you have to stick at it for a while. For a while, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I I know at least ChatGPT. I mean, the thing is, and here's where no one's ready for. It's only going to be a year or two um, before anyone can build their own ChatGPT with just a little bit of code, and right. you know we'll have power powerful enough. You know, everyone will have a powerful enough GPU uh to, to get it you know cranked out a couple nights and they can do it what on whatever data set they want um and then at that point is instead of trying to stop a tool you just realize that it's a tool and you yeah. try you know instead of teaching yeah. kids uh, it, um <laughs> it, it's actually kind of tough like our we, we homeschool so I, I i do math with my my oldest and my wife does it with the youngers until they you know get up to the level where um yeah she just kind of can't can't do it anymore and um it, it's it, it's gonna it's so tough because it's like there's never going to be a time where my kid's not going to have access to a calculator right but it's yep. it, but yet also you know you know they need the mental capacity to do some <laughs> some arithmetic in their head because it's just going to be easier on them down the line to not have to pull out a calculator right i mean just kind of like when you guys were seeing me code using ai uh at the beginning of the stream um at the beginning of the stream I, you know at some point some of that stuff is actually easier than me asking copilot how to code and just doing it straight out right and so if yeah. i if i build the full tool set that i have then i'll become a far more even efficient coder so there mm. is going to be an ebb and flow but at some point i just got to say okay kid here's the calculator you know what i'm saying and and i think that's yeah. i mean that's part of where society just needs to go hey we've got these tools a, um right. start pushing the tools as hard as you can um, well there's a number there's a couple of responses to back you up that so the invention of the automobile and the Mosler Mosler GPT um, or was it MPT or <laughs> whatever did, did this stop people riding bicycles? Yeah, yeah. Other thing is, other thing is, is um, uh, it's a conceit of the programmers and tech nerds that they can program and code. Uh, when was the last time anyone understood how how a uh, um, uh, silicon chip works or even for that matter a trans a, a single transistor, a transistor. Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys yeah. know how that works do you need to know how that works yeah of course not yeah so, <laughs> and, but there, and there's, there's, there's one nerd in a closet who does and that's all we need and we got to feed yeah, him yeah. someone somebody <laughs> still knows how to, how to machine code <laughs> if i look if i ever you need to know how to machine code i'm not going to be dumb and stupid enough to not be able to learn how to machine code question is do i need to machine code <laughs> yeah and the other thing is what what's the what's the value of machine coding if i can get something written in, in python or c plus plus or whatever certainly c plus plus needs to be overhauled and simplified anyway but um freeing up human minds to do more creative things yeah and make life more fun is is the key here yep like am i am i going to want to not am i, I going to want kids to know how to solve quadratic equations well, sure, if they want to become sort of engineers and build systems from scratch, but not every kid. Do I want to make mathematics beautiful and fun to learn? Yes, that's what I want to do. Is Chat GPT going to help me with that? Well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. If it does help me with that, bring it on. Then that's again, yeah, yeah. it's a win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you can you can recognize that. Oh God, it's horrific. We we're relying on machines to do human thinking and creativity well no we're not 
all the creativity that the machines learn to do came from past human creativity and thought. Yeah, we just yeah. And it's not going to diminish your capacity for creative thought unless you want it to. You can always go back and ride the bicycle. And let me tell you, it's a shock to some in America, but people still ride bicycles. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's enough of that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bob Knight, next up, uh, here's one question, S&P up or down. Bob, I, I, I am still long from you know months ago when you were in here chatting with me. Um, I think we're getting very close to some issues um, with the debt ceiling. I think that could become... So the debt ceiling is going to hit in kind of like uh, the problems with the debt ceiling could hit in kind of you know, two or three waves. Uh, the 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 first wave um, is going to be the we'll call it the hedging wave, the 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 wave that hits um, when market players you know start buying puts effectively, right, and that has its own knock on effects um, that can lead to kind of reinforced selling. That's going to be the first wave. I would say that can start in May June. Um, coinciding too, I mean, right at that time as well with the massive tax drain that's going to hit this year in April. Um, so, so that that's going to, you know, that's going to be one major episode in, in the in the debt ceiling. If the debt ceiling issue doesn't get resolved and we do start draining um, the 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 uh, effectively the swimming pool, if you will that's going to be, you know, kind of the next wave. Right. And then in between there, there'd be kind of like a, a middle wave of, of selling where people just realize the potential, you know, economic damage. Uh, but then, the the, 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 the follow through of kind of the, the death spiral down. Um, so that, that's a real threat. That is an absolute real threat. And if, if the debts, I mean, unfortunately there's no data to predict that you just have to use intuition, um, you know, and the you know, kind of the political discourse, um, but I, uh, that's my one caveat, uh, being long right now. Um, but if that wasn't an issue, I mean, I think the flows are so strong right now. I, I will say you do see every time there's a concern over, uh, more aggressive rate hikes than uh, rate hikes than expected. And this is going all the way back to the October low. Uh, you see a sudden sell off and then you see markets accelerate extremely quickly back up. Um, and I think we'll continue that chop. I think that is kind of how it will play out. You'll see the, the hedging bets take place every time there's the better than expected headlines and then markets fire higher. It's, it's almost, uh, you know, usually markets, um, uh, they say, uh, uh, escalator up, elevator down. <laughs> it's kind of the opposite right now. It's uh, elevator up, uh, escalator down and just kind of a higher volatility because, uh, there's so much concern over the interest rate thing, um, but slowly but surely, I think we step higher. So uh, I'm still long up until the debt ceiling really becomes center stage, mm. uh, and we hit yeah. um, we hit June. In which case, too, the other thing too is, I mean, the main models that I use are still going to say things look bullish because they don't know the right. you know the hellscape that's know about you, <laughs> about honestly. to approach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But I do, and and that would certainly get me out of the current position yeah. I am. But um, I've been uh, you know kind of building my long position since the end of last year into now, and I'll, I'll hold on to it um, for the time being. So. Yeah, I, I remain bullish. I wouldn't say I'm. Ex I mean, the, the <laughs> there is there is the potential for an extremely bullish move, um, but uh, uh, it it is. I, I'm yeah. The debt ceiling thing is is very worrisome. Um, going forward, and then uh, Bob, just to follow up on that. Yeah, thirty five hundred low. I mean, I I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm still long. If we, if I, if I thought we were going down to 3,500, I, I would get out of the way. So I, I guess I'll say I, I don't think we're going there. Um, but uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> I could be wrong. I don't think I am, but I could, but I could be. Uh, the other thing too, you put uh, that the housing market is collapsing. Not a question, but I, I did just. If you haven't watched the first hour, uh, really about 30 minutes in uh, forward. I, I think I think the housing market collapse is done. I think it's like that was likely a cause more of um, the the major. I, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of Bob. I think there's a lot of um, strength at thirty nine fifty and thirty nine hundred respectively, right about where we're at in price. Um, personally, uh, from what I'm seeing, um, go, going back to the housing. Stuff. What's that? Yeah, no, keep going. Go on, go uh, my, my temperature is rising from the crypto in the chat. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm ignoring freaking the Freaking heck, I'm about to unleash on this. No, I, yeah, crypto's not my thing. 
we can get to crypto in just a second. The, the housing market, I, I really think, is going to start leveling out. Um, it, yeah, kind, kind of watch some of the stuff that I had earlier, but I really think the 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 drop in in housing um, was more to do with the sudden deficit reduction that we saw. Uh, at the end of 2021 through 2022, and, uh, and I think that's finally leveling out. So that, that's my thought on the housing market, and, and I, I think it could start leveling out soon, uh, which would be like the major contrarian call of all contrarian calls, because I think everyone thinks mm-hmm. housing is going lower. So um, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll you know play the fool there and see if I'm right. Um, mm-hmm. All right, go go ahead and go at it. I'm, I'm now catching up, uh, Bijou. We can talk. Oh uh, uh, yeah. You have a read read up because because maybe you want to uh, back 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 me up on this maybe cybernetics too. Crypto is not a very useful thing. It's a tool for idiots, knaves, and fools. Um, but I'll but I'll tell you I'll tell you why I think this is just my opinion. Why I think crypto has had such a rush um, is because people don't trust their governments, right? So the point about MMT, what we're saying is that fiat currency is a very good system. It's zero seniorage, costs nothing to create the currency, but it is a public monopoly and the tax liabilities force demand for that currency, which is fine. There's force and coercion everywhere in society. And you think private currency is going to help that, get it, make it any better? It's going to be worse, mate. If you have private actors forcing you to, to accept their currency and that's all currency is it's an iou it's got to be backed by force if it's zero seniorage you know if it's not actually a commodity if it is a com- commodity like gold you're just going to have piracy just completely regressive uh, just completely nuts so have a look at what uh, randall ray's <laughs> writings on on money and what it really is what is and then what is see funny if you, when think, you talk about the you, pirate, you think ahead, yeah. sorry sorry <laughs> yeah. sorry sorry go ahead go ahead yeah, just 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 tell me if you read at Randy Ray honestly all through it. You know, I don't I don't want to give you homework, but just if you do, come back and tell me whether you think the force of a democratic government is justified or not. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's justified, but it's got to be a democratic government. If you if you have a neoliberal government full of power elites uh, who don't understand the way that taxation works, who don't understand that the fiat currency is a decent good on a system that is in public control public control of we the people rather than private hands like like crypto then you yeah obviously you're going to get the story backwards you, you're going to think crypto is a great liberatory thing put it put it put everything in the hands of the private sector it's just not going to work but our problem is our governments are not democratic so uh, uh crypto crypto is is nowhere near as good as chat gpt <laughs> for human <laughs> for human human advancement liberalization liberation crypto doesn't scale like once you've got a currency system that's enabling transactions that's it chat gpt is about real economy it's about it's not a numeria for knowledge it's scalable it, it can it can increase as long as human uh input and expertise and scientific findings <laughs> increased something like chat gpt or the or even better version of it will also increase just like uh google or DuckDuckGo or any internet search it's 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 going beyond that into even more creative uh generative types of search so uh instead of being a search engine it can be almost a knowledge engine or um certainly a lot better than wolfram alpha is now already if you look at chat, chat gpt you can still use wolfram alpha to get good uh, mathematical answers technical answers but Copilot and chat GPT are, are leveraging human knowledge and it's scalable. It scales up. Crypto doesn't. It's just a, any currency system is a, uh, a new Maria for prices. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, if you put it on a gold standard, standard, it's completely regressive. If you, it, otherwise, if you don't, it's got to be based on some sort of um, ability of you to get other people to accept your currency. Okay. You can't do that without some sort of force or coercion even if it's just uh, psychological, you know, everyone agrees that a Bitcoin is worth something, even though it's not. If you get enough people agreeing, then you can get a fool to take your IOU. So, but, you know, go, go and read Randall Ray before you 
come on and tell me that crypto is better than fiat. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a rant. <laughs> I'll tell you anything that, to add to that. Yeah. So, um, I don't get the benefit of the chain. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I the block the blockchain. It, it actually, it's a good point. I want to amplify let, let me, that one. Let, the idea that the idea that you're trustless, a currency is trustless, right? It it that's short circuiting human moral moral capacity to think it's much better if you have a fiat currency it's a public monopoly uh but but with the caveat that you want a democratic government so you've got to keep pressuring your government to be more democratic not less so that you're the voice of the people has a say in what public investments are made and you can run a job guarantee etc cetera, etc cetera. you could increase human prosperity that way but once you once you take away uh trust once you take away the need for trust, you take away a lot of um, good in society. Maybe, maybe I'm too much of just a. Uh, maybe I'm too much of a. <laughs> an American democracy is the greatest thing ever, sort of thing. Um, but, but I, I, I just, I really just think in our legal system enforcing business agreements and contract agreements is really the way that we should go. Um, I, I actually don't think there needs to be more than, you know, the two or three parties in any decision, uh, in, in any economic agreement or any, you know, business agreement that needs to be anything beyond the contract that gets enforced. And, um, right. But the problem is modern day society has incomplete contracts. So in the old days, contracts were completable. But, you know, in the modern era, they're, they're incomplete contracts always. So if you, if you crowd out human moral capacity uh, by making it all automated, you're going to cause a dystopia. So the way that you want to crowd in moral thinking, so to make incomplete contracts, I, I agree with you, by the way, that, you know, it makes sense to have a, a legal system, a public monopoly on the currency and on uh, legal contracts and torts and that sort of thing. But, but if you've got it incomplete contracts, which is majority of the way we live today, um, then you want to crowd in moral behaviors. So you want to make it make it make human contact and and like you know law, uh, uh, you want to have a customer being kind of loyal to your brand and you want to build up that sort of trust uh, socially, not yeah. not through automated systems. It, you can do it with automated systems, but I'm just warning you. You go to Mars, right, with Elon Musk, run that experiment, and then come back, you know, in 50 yeah, years and tell yeah. me how it goes. Yeah. But I know you, can, I know that's facetious, but yeah. just think about it a little bit. Game that out in your mind, how that works when you remove people's need to trust one another and just tell me, you know, ha honestly, how, how is that going to work out for you? I, I'm just telling you, it's my opinion. It's not going to work out well. Um, so... <sighs> There, just a couple thoughts um, that, that come to mind. One, I, I don't, I, I think the biggest thing is I don't think, I, I don't get what the, what a shared ledger proves anyway, right? Like, it, 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 maybe I just don't, you know, I haven't thought it through enough, right? But um, the, 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 the chain says that I have some claim over something, right? You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, whatever exchange happened, I have a claim over a house is on the chain or whatever it is that I own is, is now on the blockchain, right? What is that? That doesn't mean anything though, right? What, what, what it means is who's got the army to enforce that I get the private property yeah. that's mine, that I get, you yeah. know, w whatever the, the computer that's mine, so on and so forth. Right. And who's going to protect me from ha hacking the blockchain? I mean, well, yeah, yeah, that was actually the point I was going to point out. You know, you talk about the pirates, you talk about the pirates, easily. pirates stealing the stealing the gold, um, pirates stealing the gold. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, pirates are stealing stuff off the chain all the time. But not, that, that notwithstanding, I, I just it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me what you gain what you gain from it. Um, uh, but that sovereignty will 
then we already have, I guess, uh, cybernetics, I guess my thought, my point would be that we already have it. We already have it with what we have. Why do we need to waste any energy on a, on a, on a blockchain? Um, I, I, if, if it, I, I kind of want it to click. Okay. Here's why I kind of want it to click. Um, and here's an example. I think that Rohan Gray gets at to a certain extent is then you can have these, I don't call them black market economies, economies, but you can have these economies that, um, uh, kind of grow up, uh, um, kind of come into existence in a sub economy, um, of the broader economy. A great example of this is, is like video games have their own economies that exist within the game that are meaningful to the players in the game. And to a certain extent, every, you know, all activity of trade is all on a, you know, it's a shared ledger, right? But at the end of the day, the, the enforcer of that shared ledger is the game developer, right? Delta. Yeah. Um, so you, you still have an, you still have someone ma making, um, no, I don't want to, I don't want, uh, <laughs> democratizing access to financial tools for starters. How do we not have that? I don't, I don't get it, man. How do we not have that already? Um, we don't, we don't have it because the government isn't, isn't democratically oriented in the first place. And we have the highly unequal power structures. So this is what the crypto people are on about, which I I'm in sympathy and agreement with. You're, you're, saying, can, you're just saying opportunities to, to get yeah. access to the finance sector from a broader, yeah, yeah. A, 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 I, from from a broader st a spectrum uh, uh, of, yes. of of the class, uh, cla yeah, more, like any yeah. any old any yeah. old grunt, working class grunt can can now access a means of uh, trade and payment pri privately, but um, you can do that or you can do that without. Okay, one one argument is for better privacy because it's free from central bank uh, inspection, but it's not free from inspection by backdoors who created the private cryptocurrency so yeah. you're transferring yeah. your trust from government to uh the, the the bitcoin services servers and developers and unname unnameable russian assets and all sorts <laughs> you, you're completely stupid if you think that that's going to help but um what you what, what's far easier to work on is to work on transforming your government i know i know it's not easy i know it's not easy okay it's not easy to get a get, get democracy we haven't had it it's probably a long way off and the probably ecological climate crisis is going to force us to have better democratic governments but but um you know just just think about it the private a private run currency is, is going to be worse for you it's not going to be better but but i understand the desire and the motives of the crypto people they want to be free of control from oppressive governments i think that's a good thing i think they're going about it completely the wrong way it's going to end up worse for them and you know how do you know that i mean how do you make bitcoin democratic you've got to give it to everyone is that is that's what is that is that what's happening <laughs> yeah does every does everyone have equal access to bitcoin no it's like gold it's freaking rare it's hard to get and uh there's increasing returns to wealth because the price is completely unhinged it can go up just from pure speculation there's no anchor for yeah. the price it's not the game theory doesn't apply and so They've sold you a, a bad bill of goods there. Okay, so with a fiat currency, it's anchored by whatever the government says it pays is going to pay for a unit of labor and demand for uh, collateral for bank loans. It's an, a price anchor. So that's a stable currency. That's democratic. But I think just the far easier thing, I'm not saying it's easy, the far easier thing is to uh, have a democratic government. Now, you could say, well, I'm going to create this private army we're going to overtake governments, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll run, it, we'll run yeah, exactly. crypto as our, as our new exactly. government currency. Yeah. Well, fine. You've just created a new government. Maybe it's more democratic, maybe not. Yeah. But, you know, are you completely mad? I mean, that, you think that's going to actually work? I, I haven't seen any crypto inroads that's displacing fiat. It just doesn't exist. It's all a scam. It's all a Ponzi scheme. But if, if it works out for you, if it works out for us, fantastic. I'll, I'll jump right on board. <laughs> um, funny, uh, funny enough, uh, Zybernetics, I do own some crypto. <laughs> no, not much. It's not, I mean, actually, it's the same amount. Um, it's just not worth as much as when I purchased it. <laughs> uh, it's, not a, it's not a currency. A currency is an IOU. 
Yeah. And, and no well, one's said, yeah. promising you. No one's promising you anything for a Bitcoin. Uh, no one's promising you anything. Oh yeah, clearly. You, you I mean, there's find, no, there's tell me someone there. who promises me a bottle of water for a Bitcoin. There's, yeah, there's nothing. Doesn't to exist. I gotta go to. Where do I gotta go? Uh, what's the El Salvador? I'm, all, I'm always pricing things in there. US dollars or or euros or whatever. I'm not pricing things in Bitcoin. There's, there is no Bitcoin price. Um, yeah, Speculative uh, vehicle. Z- Zybernetics, I appreciate it, man. That was good back and forth. Um, I, I wanted to jump way back up. Uh, Josh had a question on um, if there's anything else uh, that I could have gotten Steve Keen's opinion on. I, I really would have liked during the interview to have a little bit more time to go back and forth to see if... Uh, um, if I could get him to at least understand my, my, my thought process, um, on kind of everything I explained and uh, as we started out the show today, um, and see from, you, you, you know, if, if we just assume that I was true in that, or if I, if I assumed if I was right and, and it was tr- true, what I was saying that the, that's how things play out. Um, how would the Minsky system look, you know, uh, how would his, uh, how would the, whatever his debt deflation dynamics look if, uh, if, if the world played out the way that I, I thought it, I thought it would, um, it's probably something I, I would have liked to have followed up on, uh, to, to get his take and to see how it goes. Um, yeah, probably would have been it. Um, anyway, back at it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard thing to do because, um, you need you need periodic financial crises to test test yeah. the Minsky hypotheses out. So we uh, only get one every ten years or so. Well, that's the tough I mean, thing. there are many cycles, but the the business cycles are, are very different yeah. to a Minsky, which is an upwards instability. Yep. And yep. um, and so we don't get enough of them to test and train on. The stars got a so, line, sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, Did Steve verify your math? Are you asking? Steve does dynamical systems, not neural networks. Are you asking, yeah, for, for what, what math on what, like just the, the, with some of the projects Steve, I've been working on or, or. Steve's a bit low level on the math, right? He still uses Pearson correlation yeah. coefficients for time series. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, come on, Steve, raise your game. No, I'm just joking. I mean, you know, yeah, I don't think Steve Keen is doing, is using the same tools that Douglas and I are using. So. But we do we do eventually plan to use some dynamical system models, but they won't be full uh, godly table sectoral balances because we're dealing with uh, SPX. Tr re- real quick though, what what math were you talking about? I, I'm I, I just want to make sure we're talking about the the same math. Um, right, right. right. Um, but yeah, we we right now we're doing slightly different things. I, I think Steve was intrigued though i i hope he's got some okay good 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 i hope he's got someone that can take some of the projects i've done and actually give them the <laughs> the time they deserve uh the, the, yeah, the yeah. depth the depth they deserve um cause hey, you, you maybe he'll have some uh machine learning and minsky software soon oh that'd be that'd be fun but he's struggling he had he had a few bugs recently so it's obviously there's some uh okay Slight, slight brick walls that you can run into in software development if you if you only have a couple of really good software developers that can get a bit stretched. With a labor anchor of value, you have to just, I don't know, maybe even read Marx first, uh, labor theory of value, which is all wrong, but it's, it's the correct <laughs> idea is that if, you, if you've got a monopoly issue of the currency, they, they tell you what their currency is worth. Okay, so... Warren, yeah, Warren isn't God, but on a few things that he has expert knowledge on, you you ought to not discount his knowledge in those expert areas. Okay, motor cars, tennis, <laughs> banking, and money. Uh, um, so what happens? I mean, obviously, what happens in the real world is that people running the currency monopoly system don't understand they've got a monopoly, so they let the the anchor for prices float a little bit by uh you know trying to tweak supply you should let supply for it float and you can fix the price that's the system why is the labor anchor not effective at the moment it's because the government's running the system try to fiddle with supply instead of fixing the price 
So it's a matter of understanding the system and running it uh, for purpose. So Warren's argument isn't that we currently have a labor anchor for prices, but that we could have, because the monetary system as described by MIT tells you how to run a fiat currency with a stable price and full employment. So you can have a price anchor if you want one. If you don't understand that, you might not have a good price anchor and, and the price will keep prices will keep going up until there's a deflation. And after that, they'll just keep floating up again. It's a, it's a policy choice, but it's a choice made out of ignorance. Right on. Right on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm glad you agree. I don't know. I to me, I kind of lost track. So I'm just. I, I hope. I hope I agree. <laughs> well, the simple way to put it is, if you've got a monopoly, you're a monopolist. You can either let supply float and fix the price, or you can choose to fix the price and let the supply float. Float up to, you know, how much you are able to supply. If you're at full supply, like if you're a water monopolist, and you've reached your supply uh, limits. Yeah. Uh, then you can stick the price up to limit the demand. But if you are a currency monopolist, you don't have that constraint. You can endlessly float supply, keeping the price stable, fixed. Yeah. Yep. You let sense. supply go up or supply go down. The price is stable. It's a labor anchor because you, as a government, that's really what you're interested in is hiring people into the public sector for public purpose. And letting the private sector do whatever it likes within the law, and that's how it works. Okay, but it, it doesn't work that way currently because people running the system don't understand. If if you crypto guys can actually run a system like that, understanding the purpose of the currency, then I think you'd be ahead. You might even be able to grab an island somewhere and create create an MMT paradise running a cryptocurrency. But all it would be is a fiat currency under the, under the hood. It's a new Maria. You say what it's worth. Uh, you become the government, <laughs> and then you set the price level and let supply float, and the private sector can uh, do what they like uh, up and up to uh, what's uh, deemed legal in your little libertarian paradise. Well, there would be no laws <laughs> <laughs> in my libertarian paradise. <sighs> yeah. What, what contracts are they going to enforce? Uh, Look, um, I want to pay you ten bit, bit, bit bitcoins for this uh, for this microphone you've got there. Can we can we make a contract? Okay, here's the bitcoins. You don't send me the microphone. Hey, yeah, Douglas, didn't yeah. I just enter a contract with you? Yeah, what aren't you supposed to send me this microphone? Yeah. and you going nah. No, no, no. That's off. The, 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 got, agreement, the, the, the agreement here that you didn't know about, but was actually on chain, is that I was going to. Hey, the my New Zealand lawyers are going to jump on I your gonna, American. I was going to rip you off. That's was that was <laughs> that was the actual contract. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, man. I'm I'm getting a little. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting a little, uh, yeah, uh, just a little, a little drain from the night. It's been a good one, but I am starting to, yeah. uh, starting to hit my end. Uh, the questions. Yeah, oh yeah, TR man. Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't watch. I don't. I turn on. I can't watch it. I can't watch. Um, I can't watch like the Fed, the Fed chair stuff. Because it, it's, <laughs> I, I spend so. It's, it's cringe. I spend so much mental energy. It's enough mental energy to try and uh, like kind of translate everything he's saying into, you know, into um, like like the correct frame, and then to actually, uh, you know, do that in the first place, and then try and understand what it is that he's actually saying and which direction it is uh, going to go. I don't know. I, I just let the market tell me what it is they're thinking he's saying and go from there. Um, I mean, it's the same way with that podcast uh, the, the professor on before. Um, Warren Mosler. I mean, I almost had to turn off the damn podcast because the guy is just, uh, just an imbecile speaking. Again, a nice guy. I, 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 I'm sure he's a nice guy, but it's making no sense. <laughs> making no sense. I mean, he even goes on. Oh, yeah. Economy's way better than I expected. <laughs> Maybe come up with a theory as to why, uh, why it was better than you expected, uh, why, why it was better than you, you were expecting in the first place. I like the emoji, man. That's good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Ty. 
that's uh, I think it's the first emoji we've had on, on the live stream. Um, oh, thanks, Charles. Group, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I, I love I love you guys uh, coming into the chat and uh, yeah, all going crypto on us. It's good stuff. I mean, I like I like uh, the energy and debate that I uh, put into it. it. Does it does raise my blood pressure a little bit? So I'll, I'll go I'll go and have a uh, Charles, try and have a cup of green green tea afterwards. <laughs> uh, Ch Charles, I'll, I'll I'll let you know. I, it's all I, good. I, I started my, I mean, I started my, my journey out as a, as an Austrian as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you can still, I, I mean, you can still have a very, you can still be a, a true MMT -er, um, and still have a very high view of kind of the individual and, and a lot of the stuff that I think is very important to, to kind of the Austrian mindset and, um, yeah, small government can yeah. work for some. It's what well, your culture, <laughs> what your culture wants. You 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 have a chance of getting. This is you know, and and Bijou, I mean, this is a, that framing thing, right? Uh, that you talk about so often. Um, when when Austrians or, or libertarians speak about small government, what they really mean, or at least what I meant, I mean, they might not really mean that, but what I mean is complete representation, right? Like, like that that's really what we mean right uh, yeah, that's infinite size government to me exactly exactly i, 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 want, that. Exactly. I want that too <laughs> exactly exactly and, and what what you, you only what you only achieve what i think the libertarian truly wants when you have um an infinite sized government right Be, yeah. because when you have a government of a thousand people which we do uh you get a, a terrible government because of it right yeah. i mean you get yeah. you know uh, close to oligarchies yeah. right i mean that, that's that's kind of what comes out of it yeah. um yeah. You, you get yeah. Yeah, yeah you get a government that that is actually a government of nobody uh, except for yeah. you know except for their own self-interest and, and no one wants people that. patting each other on the back in yeah. washington telling each other they're doing a great job because unemployment is down to six percent yes what yeah. the hell yeah yeah <laughs> um so, so I, I, I think if I, I think if you can look at it in, in, in a reframed way, um, a lot of the a, a lot of the goals of um, a lot of the goals, a lot of the aims uh, that, that an Austrian would want are actually achieved uh, through the, the policies that you would you would kind of build upon through MMT. Um, and yeah, I, I I would love to see more Austrians have a have a uh, I don't want to call it libertarian, but a, a, a yeah, just a, a flavor of MMT that is uh, that is more directed at people who want what, what they would call small government, but really what they mean is just full representation. Um, and the problem is, and here's the problem, and, and actually we were talking about uh, last week what would be more likely to get the the austrians to come to mmt or the marxists to come to mmt and i think i'm just wrong i think i was wrong in this i think the marxists are going to have an easier an easier path uh because i think the the religion of marxism is is more palatable to mmt than the than the religion of uh kind of the austrian i mean cuz cuz i think at the end of the day the austrian sees the state as as kind of the central problem and um yeah. and it's because of that framing issue right uh, yeah. when, when you see the state as, as really the collective whole then all of a sudden yeah. it looks different but um anyway yeah. i'll digress yeah, those, M those M mt has all sorts because it's it's ideological neutral and i can say that even as a as a follower of zizek because you know he he, he always says you're 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 at your most ideological when you think you've got no ideology. But MMT is not a person, so it has no ideology. It's just a uh, body of thought and literature and thinking on um, how how the monetary systems that we have in place today and for 4,000 years in the past actually kind of work. And uh, it's just trying to educate people to understand what it is, how it works, and what is the policy space available to a government within that policy yep. space yeah you can do whatever your culture wants you can be very very liberal very an anarchic even or you can be very communistic and very centralized or you could be socialized in a non uh central way with a very small government 
that has um, local democracies all over the show where people at local communities are figuring out what they really want. So whatever your culture dictates, you can have that. And MMT only aids you in understanding uh, what the policy space available is to the monopolist. And, and you definitely MMT pushes you into wanting uh, more democracy because you realize the currency is yeah, a public monopoly. Up, yep. It's not, it's, it's not going away. I mean, let's be, let's be yeah. adults about it. It's not going away. It's been with us for 4,000 years, for goodness sake. So we're not, we're not going to suddenly go to some private currency system. Um, but, oh yeah, lost my train of thought there. No, I was just agreeing with you. I'll, I'll back, I'll back you up. And thanks Charles for coming into the chat. Hope yeah, you do yeah. come back. Yeah, thanks everyone for uh, for jumping on in, Charles. Yeah, c come on back, and um, I, I will discuss Josh's uh, point here. J Josh, and I, we can kind of wrap it up, uh, wrap it up on this point, and then Bijal, I'll let you kind of have the last word in the outro. Um, All right. But but I will say what what MMT um, what MMT ultimately did to to convince me is it really it, it gave me a framework for making accurate predictions about the future, and it gave me a framework. Uh, to to create testable hypotheses and um, test them in real time on the data that's available without ever having to do any uh, any sort of uh, play any games like well it's only when everyone finally realizes this that this thing will finally happen around every corner you can use the MMT framework to test uh, to, to to develop testable hypotheses on the data that is available. Um, and it's the MMT framework that allows you to understand it and it consistently makes predictions, uh, about the future. So that, that, that's kind of the short, that's kind of the short answer. Um, ultimately also we've got trillion dollar coins and a trillion dollar coin. Yeah. Get rid of the debt ceiling nonsense. Um, um, it's been a good one guys. It's been a good one. Another great live stream. Uh, appreciate everyone tuning in again. We had at the top of the show, um, that uh, Bijou was on the MMT uh, Applied MMT podcast with Adam and Ryan. A absolutely great thinkers, great guys. Uh, I was on uh, Steve Keen's live stream, so check that out from Saturday if you haven't. And I, I, I despite, I mean, I feel like I plug it way too much. I feel like I plug our Patreon um, way too much, but I did. <laughs> I got two messages recently um, asking me, you know, where, where, where can they find, <laughs> where can they find access uh, to the work that Bijou and I are putting together? So we do have a Patreon page. I'm gonna plug it real quick. Um, I, I try and not make it overly burying here, but. Uh, patreon.com slash mmt macro trader three tiers if you want to just support us get access to some of the uh kind of more academic stuff uh that's the the lowest tier every tier gets the you know everything on up um and then for the the next two tiers are um for traders and investors if that's anything that interests you i mean i Look, I think the models that are there are very helpful. I use them in my day-to-day -day trading. I think they can generate some alpha if it's something you're interested in. So check that out over there, uh, patreon.com slash MMT macro traders, where you can find that. Um, so there's the one plug for the live stream. And then, yeah, thanks again, everyone, for showing up. And uh, Bijou, uh, I'll give you the floor to uh, to sign us out. Okay, well. It's, it's to this week, torrents of trillion dollar coins, Douglas. Pal the Penguin, stuck with the Steve King Soviet era Commodore 64 computer, so he can't possibly keep track of the trillion dollar coin when it gets split into a trillion <laughs> tiny pieces. I mean, you know, 64, K, okay, the count records just don't have the floating point arithmetic to handle it, mate. So if Mosler in the Batcave can invent a 128K computer, in time, then the Gotham currency will hyperinflate into debased trillion dollar trinkets. Find will this will this will this disaster happen? Find out next week if the 128k Fed computer gets out of the bat cave, or if the Fed will have to go back to the bat teeth fountain pens and bat guano ink ledger books. No problem then. Same MMT time, same MMT channel. Every Bye. week, everyone. <laughs> Chris, see you next time. See you next time.